Um, all right, well, let's begin. Um, this is the Duke London podcast, episode 43. Um, I'm here with Mechanical, also known as Alex. Big up, um, big up. Yeah, we're in a... Oh, this is worth mentioning. We are in a new home for... The foreseeable future, I'd like to say. We'll see how it goes. Um, we're at the University of East London. Um, thanks to the University of East London's urban practice degree, dance urban practice degree. So thank you for that to them for hosting us. Um, and yeah, hopefully all goes well and this continues and this makes a difference in terms of um, streamlining the process of the podcast, being able to invite guests and stuff. So yeah, Um Hi, Alex. How's it yes, going? Yes, <laughs> going on, Mr. Luke, Mr. Duke. However, people know you. I think some yeah. people know you more as Duke. When I say Luke, they're like, uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Another yeah. generation know you as Luke. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? So it's so weird because it's like, um, then the name Duke was from my like dad and granddad used to call me that. Okay. Since I was like a little baby, it was like just a nickname. So when I, because I had already been dancing for a while, when I changed it to Duke, because I was like, let me just go with something that, if I'm gonna have like a branding name, something that is real yeah but now it's like the people that know me as duke are either the people that don't know me or the people that know me it's like my family or like strangers uh, okay. so, <laughs> so every, all the friends in the middle know yeah. me as luke okay people that have never they've like just seen me or met yeah. me once it's like yeah. oh you're duke and then my family when i go home for like christmas it's like hey duke what's up wow you know so it's like okay. it's really weird so even now they call you that even though you're fully grown yeah my that. dad's called me that like almost non-stop like i i can't remember my dad ever calling me luke <laughs> wow. just, okay. it's just my nickname and my granddad always called me that okay yeah okay Nice. Well, listen, it's it's great to be here, man. And, yeah, I mean, thanks thank for coming. Thank you for bringing me on because I've seen you've done so many cool podcasts. And, oh, um, thanks, man. You know, even though I've been doing the whole IG thing, you took it to the next level of making it professional, the equipment and everything like that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> thanks, glad that man. You've got me in here. Yeah, try, and bro, thanks so much for coming. I think it's like I was watching um, your stuff. I think we spoke about this at the Firehouse event, mm. but like I saw, uh, I saw that you were doing these talks like, years ago i think you know lewis from uma yeah he he used to train with you or something he used that's to have right. a trainer for some yeah, of the younger yeah, poppies right, right. and it was around that, that that was like years ago and at that time he was like oh have you seen this thing that um alex does the the he's like it was like a friday night or something yeah, yeah, right yeah, you yeah. did like a talk with different people yeah okay yeah, yeah. something that's like right, that that's right yeah, yeah yeah and he was like have you seen these things i was like, oh no i didn't really see it i think chris stein was my first one. Oh, really yeah i think chris stein was my first guest yeah yeah, yeah. And I had never, like, I hadn't watched it really, but he told me about it. I was like, oh, cool. That's a, that's a cool idea. And he was like, yeah, it's actually really interesting to like, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you've been doing this <laughs> for a no, long time. I, 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 do you know what? I forget because it all kind of blurs into one. And I'm really sorry that one, the early ones couldn't have been recorded. And then mm. there was a point when Instagram was upgrading. So some people were saving theirs and they were telling me to save it. I'm like, how? Yeah, how do phone's not even letting me save. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't like. Because you did it on IG Live, right? Yeah, right. well, yeah, before it was, I think it might have been even before this whole IG live thing was a right, thing. Right, right, right. Well, whatever you called it. But like, yeah. um, I did one with Pop and Pete, which was incredible. Oh, sick. People were saying to me that they'd seen, a, that they saw a side of Pete that they never really saw. Mm. And and then I'd done an amazing one with Waleed. <gasps> Didn't get saved. No, oh, so I could be just chat. I could have just said I interviewed Taco. Yeah, like, it don't matter. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. There was uh, like another fifty episodes yeah, I did. Oh but. gosh, you know what I mean? So. It's a shame, but nevertheless, yeah. I mean, it was. It's, I think that's one thing I've loved about the, the Instagram is being able to do those yeah, chats with people. Yeah, yeah. You know what, I mean? what made you? What was your like reason for starting that? Good question. I actually don't know now <laughs> because um, I, I guess I've always been into just talking about. I've always loved it. I've always been quite analytical. Yeah, yeah. And um, I guess whoever I got, you know, whoever I built up a rapport with, there's always an element of that relationship that exit that that has some sort of conversation. I think. Most people that know me have had some decent quali uh, yeah. conversation with me. They would have a story about us going into debt for about right, something. Right, right. Even if it's as, as as basic as a biscuit. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll talk, you know what I mean? So I just think I just wanted to just capture it. I was also going through a bit of a, a phase of trying to find my lane. Mm. Not quite knowing where I fit in, in what the way? scene. Well, do you know what? I mean, the scene's changed over the years. And I've, mm. I've seen a lot of those transitions. And I think... It goes from feeling happy, feeling kind of I found a lane, mm. not feeling finding a lane, working on maybe not. So it's always been that kind of ah. Mm. And I think as time has gone on, I've kind of organically been just developing skills of finding new interests. So I think yeah. by the time I started doing the interviews, I had just done a course on 
talking to a TV, like a TV presentation okay, course. Right. And then I did a public speaking course. So I think I just then wanted to just start to exercise yeah, what I'd learned. With it. Yeah. And I did that because I hit a point where I just didn't know where I fit. I'd felt like, you know, the dance, the dance scene isn't for me. Mm. I didn't quite know. Do you know around what year this was? Good question. I think, well, I, the point where I I can clearly say that I felt like, okay, whatever this space in the dance scene is, I don't recognize this anymore, right. was 2010. Mm. And I know why that was the case. So I'd just come back from being on tour with Butlins yeah. and I'd been working for a year. So I, was, I think I remember you being on tour with Butlins. I don't know why I know that you were. Yeah, but I just have an image in my head of like, oh yeah, I know that you were doing a tour with Butlins. But I didn't. I went the red coat just so just to be clear on that because people were thinking. No, no, like, like you yeah, were yeah. doing a popping. I was yeah. solo, right? So it, <gasps> no, yeah. you know why? Oh shit! This like you know when like a memory has just been dusty in the right, back right, of your head right, and it just you? popped up. Fuck me! Uh, sorry, I was in um, Portsmouth doing okay. a workshop for Sasha. You know the b boy. That's right. And yeah. yeah. He asked, I think you were sick or something. And he asked me if I could cover. Like I was oh. down there at, on the, in the afternoon. Okay. What, during the workshop? Yeah. Like during the workshop, he was like, oh, um, like, how's your popping? And I was like, Ugh. like, I don't know. I can freestyle, but like popping. And right. he was like, yeah. Cause um, do you know mechanic? I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, he does this solo. And I think maybe it was either you or one of, did you have dancers with you? We had a set. So there was three, three guests. We, I was one of them. There was a, what do you call it? Tricker. It, well, it was a tricker, but he was a Caprera artist. Ah, okay, yeah. But he yeah. did a bit of tricking. And yeah. then we had, um, and Sasha, we were the free guests. No, I was going to cover Sasha. That's why, not you, sorry. Sasha, I just remember him asking me something about dancing with you. Yeah, he was sick or, or had something and he was the one that booked us for the workshop. Right. So then he was like, oh, can you cover me to do this thing with Mechanical? Okay. And I was like, uh, and I think I didn't do it. Well, I obviously didn't do it in the end, yeah. but I can't remember why. Right. That's so weird. That's, That's why mad. I know that you were on tour with Butlins because okay. he told me all about it. Yeah, I mean, because yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. I can't remember if I did put much up on social. Mind you, even 2009, even though it's not what that even, long ago. There was we, didn't, we didn't even do it like that. Then, yeah, yeah. It was a Facebook situation. Yeah, I don't know if... We, were people on Instagram in 2009? I went on Instagram. I know in 2009. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I was mostly on Facebook. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good point. So, so anyway, sorry. So you're on tour with Butlins. Yeah, you just finished. Yeah, and, and um, it, again, I was off the scene for a year. Now, at the time, when I got the job, IP, which is kind of the popping crew I'm yeah. from, they were, it had been a point where people were starting to phase, phase, do their own thing. Yeah. Maybe, because no, there was no real direction with us. We were just... About out and about. So what would start was meeting up on Saturday at midday and going right through till like eleven midnight even mm. was now people just coming in time just for dinner. Right. So like it's almost like what are we doing? Like, yeah. So yeah. So at that point, I took the job. It made sense. Most weekends of the year, I was off doing this, but just being away from the weekend meant you was away from the scene because there right. wasn't all this st like there is now. There wasn't stuff in the week. It's mostly weekend events. Yeah, yeah. maybe the odd clubs like even a Wednesday night yeah. or something like that. So um, I came back. IP at that point had kind of almost dissolved. A lot of mm -hmm. people weren't active anymore. The only ones who probably really was active was Dixon and Carlos. I believe Carlos might have left at that point. Okay. I have a feeling, I have to check that out. Dixon was around doing his thing. Um, Chris Stein focused on oh, his yeah. professional stuff. What does he do again? He works um, for mental health charity, but he's right. done lots of stuff. I mean, at one point, me and him were actually working the same school together. Oh, okay, cool. Um, but, but he's not like a professional dancer, I guess. Not right. in dance. Right. Well, we've we done some dance stuff together, but we did it via mental health stuff. So yeah. we do dance performances, but to raise more attention around mental health and yeah. stuff like that. Uh -huh. And so uh, when I came back, it was more or less me. And I remember mm. being at the event, it was a UMA event. Oh really? And it's on you. It's on YouTube, and um, you'll see my dance solo on there. And I said, "You can." I look at it, and I can see my spirit had gone. Oh wow! Do you was, remember which one it was? Two thousand ten. Two thousand ten. I Didn't was you, judging. Is that the one you won? Oh no! When you did no, this, I was a judge. When did you judge for? So I was with Marvel and with Ricochet, and and Mustafa was the DJ. And we did it in a. I believe we did it in. I don't know if it was in Shoreditch or something like that. You did it in there. Um. Oh my God. It's on YouTube, you know, but I can't remember the name of the event. 2010 or 11? Unless it was 11. It could have been. That might have been our first one. Might have been 11. Oh, then. yeah. You did. You judged our first yeah. ever event. Was that first ever event? Yeah, I think so. And it's in, 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 I'm, I feel like it's a city of it London. It was in Holborn. Holborn, there you go. Then. Yeah, that was 2011. Oh, my God. That was go. mad. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for doing right, that. Right. So, two, so 2011 <laughs> then. So, then. So what happened between 9 and 10? I don't know. But like, mm. um, it was at that point when I realized... You didn't wow, see it in this, yourself. This, yeah, I'm, I don't belong here. Because mm. I guess 
the scene had changed and I never anticipated that. Right. Because again, when you enter something in for the first time, bearing in mind 2010 or 2011, I would have been 31. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, that's experience at some stage, but in terms of entering into a community, understanding how waves come in and go, I'd never really seen that before. Right. So you just get into, you do what you're doing, assuming that this is what it's going to always going to be mm -hmm. like. And then the reality sets in, people get bored, people move yeah, on, yeah. priorities change. So I've come and I'm in this space and I'm realizing the language is different. What people seem to value is different. Yeah. I don't belong here. Mm. So that was the beginning of me really starting to question everything. Okay. And I would say from that point, it had been a quite a long journey of me really fighting within myself to understand where do I fit? Mm. I was mechanical who won the UK champs in 2006, 2010. Yeah. What does that even mean? Right, right, right. Because before that, I was just an, an organic leader who just yeah. happened to be influencing anyone around me yeah, because yeah. I was working at a school at the time. When it became champion, it was almost like, right, so does it mean that I have to now be this? What does that even look like? Mm. And maybe when I don't feel like, yeah, it was just having to navigate what that space looked like, not yeah. understanding what change looks like when new yeah, energy yeah. comes in. How does that change? Where do I fit in that? It was quite a difficult time. It, if the best way you can describe it, what was the change in the sense of like, what what did you kind of get used to? And then what was, what would, how would you describe the new wave yeah. for? Yeah, good question. So when we spoke, like, so for example, what, when I was trying to describe the scene, mm. it's interesting. So I'll go back a bit. The scene has got this kind of a mushroom effect. And I only say mushroom from a visual, like, you know, you've yeah. got this and then it goes small again. Sure. So when I got into the popping scene, there, well, there wasn't a popping scene. I started going, <laughs> yeah. I, get, I started going pineapple. Yeah. Met James. Uh, James would then come after class to knowing that I would have, would have just finished Jimmy Williams class. Mm -hmm. So that was a setup for, for a couple of months. Um, in that time, Flexi Stu came to touch base with Jimmy and that's how I met him in the right. change room. He's talking to Jimmy. I see this white dude, bam, bam, his dude's popping. I'm thinking, okay. Mm. At that point, I'm like, don't really see white guys doing this. What are <laughs> yeah, you saying? Yeah. So we spoke and then he then kind of corrected me on like certain techniques and stuff. Okay. So Flexi Stu's role was more or less, so, quite quickly, he kind of asserted himself as, as, a, as a leader because right. he clearly knew more than all of us. Okay. But in terms of the hardcore scene, he wasn't in it like every week. He'd come in and dip out. Maybe sometimes he'll come at the end and then take James off to the pub because they, especially, at the, believe it or not, at that time, James loved his drink. <laughs> right, right, so right. they'll go to the pub and they'll yeah. do their thing. Was this pre-vegan era? Yeah, yeah, yeah. pre-vegan <laughs> era. So um, I'm setting the tone. The tone, so it really, it was just mates hanging out after uh, Pineapple. Mm -hmm. Hardcore group would have been me, James, Wayne, Emmanuel, eventually people like Josh and Becky. Mm -hmm. But then um, Flexi would come in and out every couple of weeks, do his thing, vibe with James, and yeah. then he'll come. Same with Chris Stein. So it was just a friendship thing. This whole kind of, and I know one of the uh, the, the contentions that, that in conversations that me and Renegade have often had is this whole kind of battle kind of thingy. Yeah. It was never that we were just mates. Yeah, just we didn't know out. anything yeah, else. Yeah. So that was what it was. So it grew. It grew bigger. People like Dixon and Carlos and other people, Sick Tings, Alan, yeah. they all came through, but we were still mates. If anything, it was more Dixon and Carlos that always wanted one, the branding and the whole battle vibe yeah, culture. They like were go and represent, go and do this, that. Yeah. They were they were a bit younger than us. Right. And um they came with a certain energy which never really affected the harmony of the group. It was just, they were the ones that wanted to take it there. Sure. So, you know, sometimes we were like, okay, whatever you want. We'll that. come and jam. Yeah. Like, yeah. And bring that vibe. You know, you that's that. not our thing though. Yeah. But there's no vibe on that. So yeah. So from that point, we were beginning to see the scene was getting bigger. Was there like events and stuff happening? Yeah. Yeah. The mm. first, the first major event was 2005. So even between two, 1999 and 2005, there was no popping events. Right, it would have right. been just B-Boy Champs and any kind of breaking events that maybe the poppers would go along to. Sure. So we were used to, so the reason why we formed what we formed outside Pineapple is because we knew that whatever event we went to, there's not a popping scene. Right. So that was what was happening. So the first time where popping got the attention was at the regional conflicts two, 2004. Mm. So we were the focus. People were like, if you want to learn to pop, these are the guys. And as the scene grew bigger, 
more people come, people learning from us. Still generally quite harmonious in that sense. Yeah. Yes, the battles are happening, but the battles happen at the battle time. Yeah. I think as more crews came through, then there became a little bit more rivalry. Yeah. Sure. Some people embraced it. Maybe Dixon and Carlos probably embraced it more. Yeah. People like myself, people like James, we didn't, we weren't really on that. We were just like, well, yeah, I don't like, ever remember James as a battlehead, even when I was around the scene. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and you know, and again, he's a he's a he's a South African Hertfordshire boy. So he's not even. You know what's mad? Like him and um, Flexi Sue used to always come to our training in Watford. Like that's, that's right. how I that's ended right. up really close to James because, like, that's right. Um, yeah, they used to just pass through, and like I met James in a nightclub randomly. Like Bashwood? I was no. Um, uh, what was it called? It's Oceana now. Oceana. No, yeah, yeah, Oceana now. It's what was it? Okay, back then. I feel like I should know this myself. Uh, something. Yeah. But we we were just in a no. I can't remember who I was with, and I was just like dancing. But you know when you just kind of like end up popping a little bit because I'm a little bit drunk or whatever. But not like in the middle of a circle, just kind of by myself. And then someone just taps me on the shoulder and he's like, "Hey, do you are you a popper?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, kind of." And he's like, "Oh yeah, blah blah." And he's like, "The more we talk, I'm like, oh shit, you know, like Alex, you know the." I was like, and then we kind of. Met there and then him and Flexi used to come to our um, session. I think Flexi used to teach Lee a bit of lock-in like when we were okay, hanging out at training okay, and stuff. So okay. they used to come all the time and hang out with uh, us. Um, okay. They always see James around like Watford and stuff. So Amazing. that was cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, James used to go. And, and it's funny. I mean, fun, fun fact. I mean, again, when I interviewed Flexi and Flexi talked about identity and how people perceived him, particularly outside the scene, yeah. you've, you make it made me realise sometimes as a white guy doing these sort of styles and how it's perceived outside of London, you didn't realize the challenges that it brought mm. because, you know, James, I remember James coming back sometimes with a black eye oh, and he'd go, wow. James, what happened? And he would just laugh it off. Man, I got into a fight and I took out and it took three bounces to get to yeah, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, James was super strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But what it also really made me realize when I used to go down to Batchwood and Club in his area, one, he's a good looking guy, he's got yeah. good physique, he can dance well, but again, a lot of the guys don't dance like that. So yeah. as soon as he's doing that, all this negative attention is coming his way because mm. the girls like it, yeah. the guys don't like yeah. it. Whereas for me, as a black person, it wasn't always so bad because there's that mentality of, well, black guys can dance anyway. Right, so it's almost expected. It's expected, right. do you know what I mean? So I, it's only now, it's only when interviewing Flexi did I really it made me think, man, I didn't really appreciate what this meant for them mm. doing what they're doing in their areas. Coming to London for them was like a safe, what well, because yeah. now people, I can just do this and no one's judging me. Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I so where'd it go? We went. Um, so you're saying that like, that's kind of how the scene was and it was growing and other crews started coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you said it started to change. Yeah, that was it. At that point, so the biggest shift was, would have been 2004. Electric Boogaloo's came over for the first time after 25 years. They yeah. came to the breaking convention. Um, at this point, a lot of the surrounding, I'll say you, I'll you say surrounding communities, so you like yeah. your boy blues, yeah, all the yeah. different street dance crews who wanted to kind of delve into popping, but maybe didn't want to. I think a lot of them were quite intimidated by us. Right. We knew what we were doing and anyone like, if you were like, especially someone like Flexi Stu was very militant. Right. So he made you feel like you didn't know what right, you right, didn't right, know. Right. He was and, like the original Kashmir. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so I, I think a lot of people found that quite intimidating. Right. Even though I, we didn't necessarily conduct ourselves that way. I think people just perceived that. Sure. Anyway, when Electric Boogaloo's came, that came, that was almost a permission for people to openly delve into the stars. And right. at that point, we would have been like, oh yeah, but this is guys outside Pineapple, Dick, James, yeah, Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that happened. Flex, uh, so Fred Realness at that point kind of was around and then he forged a relationship with Electric Boogaloo's, which meant it was a bit of an exchange. Mm -hmm. For fitness advice, they would teach him all they knew. Mm. They then gave um, an official commission to teach the styles, which was a very alien concept to me because mm -hmm. I, was, I was teaching it from... Yeah. from Get go. In fact, when I was one year into the dance, I was teaching it in the school I was working at as a right, lunchtime right. club. So what that happened? What happened there was then when 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 Fred kind of marketed himself in that way, the focus became him, and mm -hmm. I'd never experienced that because all of a sudden it was almost like I didn't exist anymore. Right, right, right. And I never. Do, really... do you feel like that was all of IP or kind of more? You no, more no, no. felt that personally. Um, more so me because at that point IP. Most of IP at that point were dipping in and out. Okay. They weren't teaching and some... Uh, and Oh, because you were the main teacher. Yeah. That's right. right, right. That's right. And um, 
even at a certain point, James kind of stepped away from the scene and then came back at a later point. Yeah. So I would say at that point, I was the only one that was really consistently amongst it all. Got you. And I had my open class, which had opened in 2004. So Pineapple one? No, this was actually in Newham, okay. in a leisure centre in Newham. Right. And so, um, yeah, so, so, the, the, so the whole Fred Realness thing took over and it took over like, boom, like nothing. 2006, mm. this was. But what that did is it meant for me, it had me questioning, right, so what does that mean for me? Because I actually knew the Boogaloos first, mm. but I never entertained the sorts of relationship that that made me almost subject to them. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not saying that Fred was, but there was that real But like tightness. affiliated offici Absolutely. officially kind of thing. You're just like, oh, I just kind of know them. That's right, yeah. And that was always my style. I never really wanted to get any more than that unless it would organically go that sure, way. Sure. So um, bearing in mind that I've entered into the dance, I've already got all these insecurities, but I guess I didn't understand I had these insecurities until you put to they the were test. highlighted, yeah. Right. And so um, that was the first point. So that happened. And then there was all this hype and kind of attention. And as much as I thought it was really cool, at the same time, it almost made me feel like, well, right. So it's almost like what I do don't matter. Mm. Then at that point, I know there was a little bit of tension with the Fred and the and the month and, and Renegade. I, I guess there's a clash of philosophies and there was a lot of undertone there. Right. So I know that motivated Renegade to kind of um create the monsters. Yeah, yeah. And so we're, we're talking maybe now it's starting to come into my era, Yeah. which was like 2000, I say my era, as in like when I was around yeah, yeah. like 2007 onwards, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe if I'm correct, the, the, the monster thing was around 2009. I think so, that sounds yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember it was like, uh, the days when I was going to Akbar regularly. So that would have been, yeah. That's right, that's eight, right. Nine. So I think things would have been brewing. Yeah. Um, and Goodfoot were around and I know that was a lot of um, bullshit there. there I remember go. there was every fucking event that was like Goodfoot arguing with someone yeah, about yeah. Boogaloo and G-Style and all that. Yeah, and that yeah, was yeah, a yeah. whole like era in the scene of like G-Style and Boogaloo. And I, then Monsters joined in. <laughs> well, I bumped it funny. I bumped into Shaquille uh, recently on a, an audition because oh, he's sick. kind of doing his thing. But he was we were talking about it briefly and he was just saying, you know, back then it was really just a wind up thing. <laughs> and <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> it was, you know, the thing, it was mad because I, I, you know, I was there. Who was, it was I was with, um, Rajib, uh, yeah, yeah, holistic. holistic. And um, he told me that. And I had to think about that for a minute because I was like, okay, and I processed that. I was like, yeah, he goes, this is just a dance. But then I went away and I thought <sighs> I about man. this. Go, go on, go yeah, on yeah, no, yeah. please, please, fill like, that in. I'll, I'll say my opinion, but because yeah. like, this is like some of my earliest memories in the scene. Yeah. But it's like, I, it sounds, to, I, again, I didn't have the conversation and I love Good Fit for the record. Like yeah. they were like some of the our guys that we used to yeah, have. Yeah, they were really people. nice guys. Yeah. But like, it's like I feel like the whole G style versus Boogaloo thing and and the whole like arguing and I, it felt like IP versus Good for just before Monsters came in yes, and became the third yes, party. Yes, yeah. I feel like it was like maybe it sounds like Shaq saying that is like um, as an older guy now looking back, yes, right? Like yes. that's kind of the maybe the perspective yes, he has on it. Yes, but it's like at that time it was like nah, like Slick Dog said this, so this is how shit is, and it felt yeah. really like. This is where, like, for us, it was kind of like a weird... Because I feel like we were there, but like UMA were there, but like we weren't like a, a force of crew. There was like not that many of us and we weren't like representing yeah, any sure, corner. We were sure. just about. Yeah. Um, but I think with... There, it felt like argument about how popping should be done. And like, there wasn't like... Which I think now it seems to have settled a little bit into like there's different schools of thought on right. how to approach popping. I guess similarly to like contemporary, you have yes. different schools of thought in, yeah. in that. But um, at the time it was like, no, um, G-Style is the right way, Boogaloo is the wrong way. And yeah. then Boogaloo is the right way, G-Style is the wrong way or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, and I just, rem yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I'm not saying that wasn't the case, yeah. but it's like, I'm like, it didn't feel like just you winding people up, man. It felt like... More than that. Yeah. But do you know what I think? I mean, so I thought about it and I, and, and I guess like I'm somebody sometimes when people present something, I like to go away and think before yeah. I respond. And I'm and I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> that I me that it. I just responded in the but first no, three seconds. But no, <laughs> yeah. but you may have the ability to do that. Right. I have to, I have to sure. kind of, you know what I mean? And so um, I wish that I had a chance to say that to Shika. And I know we will connect again, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I thought about it and I said, well, yeah, I get it. But no, because the reason why I said it is for a lot of us, 
we, especially artists, I would argue that a lot of us are misfits mm. that we come into this space mm -hmm. where we feel like we belong. Right. So it's not just an activity. It's yeah. something that we base the whole, whether that's a healthy thing or not. Yeah. So when you're critiquing what someone's doing, it's more than just critiquing what they're doing. It's you're critiquing everything about that person, especially that young, that young age. So although, like you said, as an older person, I guess, yeah, it, 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 you know, yeah, it's just a one. It's just a dance. The reality is it's not a dance. It's the reason why you have grown men in their 50s in <laughs> still doing this dance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because their whole identity has been built around this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You. So, um, but you're right. It was one of the first sorts of rivalries we were experiencing. So that happened. And then... um. Then the monsters kind of thing was happening, and then that was almost the next popular popular mm. thing. That, like, I feel like that kick started the like kind of hardcore battle era. Like, hundred and ten. Because I feel like even with um, G Style and and uh, sorry, Goodfoot and IP, like it, just before the monsters stuff started happening, I feel like even at Arc Bar and stuff, it was like there would be arguments, but it was more about like ciphering, and there'd be some call outs and stuff, but it was like oh, well, we're going to go hard in the ciphers and show you that G-Style right. is better or whatever. Right. Whereas when Monsters came, I feel the first thing they did to like announce their presence was call out Goodfoot. Yeah, right, and it was right, like right. seven on seven at Arc right, Bar or something. Right. I they, don't know if I can remember that event. Yeah, no, I don't think it was an event. I think they organized it. If I, if I remember correctly, they organized it. No, because you know what happened? So first of all, there was that event um, with uh, the two on two where Slip Dog came. That's and right, which I was away no, for. No, not two or two. two this, the one-on-one -on -one and yeah. Breaks and Boogie were in the finals. That's right, they got to the final. I was away, I was in Wales that day. Right, and that was the first time I think we had seen them pop and we were like, oh, who the fuck are these guys? Um, we just knew them from Flawless, I think, some of us. But um, So then after that, we said, oh, they're from this crew and the Renegade and Monsters, blah, blah, blah. And then I think the, the first thing of like, oh, Monsters, it was like, they called out Goodfoot. And I think Goodfoot was a good choice because they're the ones also ready to battle people. Um... And then they just kind of casually did, said, oh, we'll do it at the next arc bar. But I think they came with like Monsters t-shirts and everything. So it was like yeah, yeah, the yeah, era yeah, of yeah. like, okay, they were a battle crew, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I guess was Renegade's idea the whole yeah, time. Yeah, his you vision. Know. Absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, it was the good foot. Like you said, even though there was this almost this rivalry and tension, essentially people still got on because I got on with all of Goodfoot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also knew that like particularly maybe Joe was a little bit more problematic in right. terms of... Uh, he yeah he just had his whole his own thing going on mm. and um but even then i personally had a good relationship with him sure um i think certain people from ip he just wasn't understood because mm. again before that point i mean fred's fred realness's philosophy was always more the parties right you know the problem was probably because he had access to a lot of maybe information from direct maybe people within that space maybe we spoke a bit too confidently more than they were able to deliver. Right. And I think that was probably more of a wind up. So there was an undertone, even though the philosophy was around partying, people embraced that, but they were still talking. And so that was fueling. It's no one party that I'd say was um, innocent in the situation. Sure, sure. Everybody contributing in their own way, whether it was through antagonism yeah. or whether it was through direct speaking. Yeah. So by the time it got to... Um, the, the monsters a lot. So in a way, we're talking three eras. We're talking yeah. good foot. We're talking realness. We're talking monsters. I'm there still trying to work out where the hell do I fit in yeah, this? Yeah, because you're not necessarily, I guess what you're saying, like you're not necessarily like super into the battle thing. Like no. for even from before when Absolutely. it was like Dixon was trying to do that with yeah, yeah, um, yeah, IP. Yeah, yeah. So then now it's kind of highlighting and becoming a thing. You're like, right, I'm not... Um, I'm not really into this. I don't really like this whole tension and competitive yeah. thing. But then also you're like, well, my safe space was like just teaching and sharing the dance. Yeah. But now Fred's the man for that. So who what am is I? It? Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is like, even as you've articulated it in these sections, I think even at then I didn't even understand the separation. Right, right. Because you Maybe see, it wasn't that separated really. It the probably same. wasn't because the thing is I became, uh, my reputation on the, world, on the world stage, but as well as particularly nationally was through battles. Yeah. But battles wasn't my thing. Mm, interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I became, That's how I think we knew about you from there you the jobs. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, you know, 2011, I became champ again. Nobody yeah. had done that again at that point. Yeah, I remember that. But that wasn't my thing. In fact, that battle when I won of beating Marvel was the, one of the worst battles ever. Mm. I remember saying, I can't remember who I was saying it. I think I was talking to Sick Things and I said, I don't ever want to like if I had to choose, I'd rather not win because yeah. I hated it. That's mm. not me. But I won. So I'm already starting to question, well, what does 
winning mean and how does this relate? I, at the time, I think I probably thought that I had to win events to assert my knowledge and leadership, whatever right. that looked like. It just, okay. I just, they were all blurred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, I guess when all of a sudden other people were starting to dominate that space, I questioned my leadership because I didn't understand the difference. I didn't understand that somebody having continued success in the battles doesn't necessarily equate to success in teaching or yeah, doesn't sure. even necessarily equate to leadership. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't. Well, know. even being good at dance. Being good at dance, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's, there's people that win a lot of battles and it's like, there's better dancers than you. You're just very good at battling and it's, it's a different skill set. Absolutely. And again, in my insecurities, I didn't understand all of that. And again, this is why I always say, this is why my philosophy has always been around nurturing. Mm -hmm. And I know if you remember back in 2014, there was a big massive issue where I must have put a statement on Facebook and then it came with a lot of backlash from people. And then what you, was vaguely as well? it was talking about respecting people, whatever the quality of the dance is okay. and inclusion. And I remember you private messaged me because there was a whole lot of things going on in the comments. And yeah. then you messaged me to kind of say, Alex, let me just get some clarity. What yeah. what do you actually mean? Oh, okay. Um, and I remembered you was the only one that actually did that. <laughs> you know. Like that. <laughs> um, but again, it was. So it was more about like the respecting. I'm trying to remember what the. Thing I was. think it was. I think the point I was I was trying to make was that people say they respect the dance, but actually they only seem to respect winning and the status it brings, right. as opposed. But if you're saying that you into the dance, we need to embrace. There's more qualities than a battle winner absolutely the, right 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 and people took that as oh. cussing the people who were winning battles well no people something. took it as kind of what's all this muddy coddling behavior like if someone's whack they're whack um uh, i vaguely remember something like that and yeah. different narratives around that and then and then and then it was kind of yeah there was just a lot of antagonism as well as a lot of just people it's just a different philosophy sure so um that was when I was really beginning to understand, okay, whatever this is, I'm not, this is not me. Mm. But where do I, where do I go? I don't know. And so that was a really, I'd say a really low time for me because mm. um, I guess when you've put in so much into the dance, not knowing that you're putting so much into the dance, all of a sudden you've put you into this and then you, it feels like you are being questioned as opposed to what you're thinking is being yeah, questioned. Sure. And so you're like, okay, so what does it say about me? Is it me that's not getting this or is there something else going on? So I think all of that right there was really beginning to build a picture for me about what this scene really is as mm. opposed to what I experienced it to be or what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I think it just needed more people in the scene to understand that the simple structure that I was used to in the numbers being small, that's not reality. The reality yeah, right. is, is that as soon as you get lots of energies, there's going to be a fight for these energies. Yeah. And there's going to be different philosophies. And often somebody will be fighting for their philosophy to dominate. Sure. And that's what it that's what it was. It doesn't have to be that, but yeah. that's what we in society, that's what we fall into. Do you mm. know what I mean? Interesting. So do you feel like now that there's more, like the scene's grown in terms of just numbers of people, mm. that it's now been allowed to separate into those different kind of camps? And, or do you still feel that kind of, because obviously as much as that may be the case that there's like more numbers, there's also the battle thing has become like the dominant thing in the culture, I guess. And like, even before where it was like UK champs and stuff like that, but now just like with Red Bull and all these big things, it's like battles have really gone big. So it's like, do you feel like it's still, there's still space for these, like kind of the way that you used to pop or like, as in the way that you used to enjoy the culture, like just jamming with friends, hanging out. Do you still think that happens? Do you find spaces to do that still? I find spaces. I actively cultivate those spaces, but right. I think the legacy of, of the transitions that we spoke about is still there. Mm. It's, um, so what I think's happened is, and I think what happened within our scene is reflective of what I think's happening around the world scene. Right. You know, events is, is dominated bat battles because that's the main, the most easiest way, structured way to bring people together. Sure. But the problem with that is now is then you get into a space where people are chasing status, mm -hmm. people are defining success in a very certain way. And I go back to this, arts is a very emotional um I would say arts by tradition is a very emotionally driven um, activity. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So what that means from how I perspect it is people are able to in, get in tune to a certain aspect of their emotional being and then present it in a way that's physical, be that, um, you know, dancing or it could be drawing, it could be spoken word or whatever. They translate what's ever going on emotionally and put it out there. Sure. So what that means is almost like um, people are almost driving around like with a car open, their bonnet, the engine's exposed. Which means that the good thing is, it's easy access to tap into the, what's going on in the engine. Mm-hmm. The danger is if the climate gets rough, the engine's also exposed. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, what I'm trying to say. I think so. So your heart's open, your emotions yeah. are open, but it's open, exposed but to the Why elements. do you think that is? Like, because they're battling all the time, you mean? Or? No, I'm saying, I think from arts, where we operate from, right. it's a very artistic. Oh, just in general, ex- as an artist. Got so yeah. that's where people are coming from. Got yeah. I believe... Um, What's happened is we've kind of moved towards this more corporate energy mm. where it's all about climbing, it's all about status, it's about achievement sure. and we celebrate the external achievement. Mm-hmm. We're not looking at what's going on in the process. Mm-hmm. And often when you listen to a lot of the narratives within the, the community, it sometimes feels like it contradicts itself. Sometimes okay. people want to speak about the community, but yet the behavior seems a lot more corporate. Mm-hmm. And so in the end, you're not doing corporate very well because if we're talking about finance, well, a lot of dancers struggle to make money yep. and everybody's chasing for that one spot. Yep. But so you're not doing a good job of that. But then because you're neglecting the qualities of community, you're not doing a job, a good job of that either. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's almost like- <laughs> Got no friends and you broke. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, you know, so we're in the middle and, and I just think we need to have honest conversations about what it is that we really are versus what we're saying, mm. you know? Um, and I think both can exist, but then just sure. maybe there needs to be a conversation about how what does it look like? Hundred percent. And I think that works on a wider scale, like a uh, community wide culture scale, but also on an individual scale. Because it's like people are like, oh, I just want to have fun with dance. I don't really blah blah blah. Like they might have another job. Like this dance isn't their main thing. But then I'm like, so why are you going so hard on like trying to get Instagram likes and doing this and trying to build your? There so you go. It, it's like Tally says it really well of like with Instagram, like if you're going to play the game, play the game or don't like, so I think it's like that applies to social media, but it also applies to finance. It also applies to status. Like if your, your thing is like, I'm going to be a uh, super, well, I'm going to be like the twins. I'm going to be the most like well-known famous dancer. That's all I, I want status. I want success in a, in a financial way, go all out and do that. Stop messing around with the like community aspect and pretending you're not yeah. trying to do that. Yeah. Or if you're not, if you don't like that stuff, like stay away from it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you're like, oh, I don't like uh, the way this is, but then it's like you're at every battle and you're like upset when you lose. It's like, but Absolutely. I thought you don't care about that. Like, so you know what I mean? Like, I think people have to decide in themselves, like you're saying, like, what is it you want? And like, what are you really doing? Yeah. Uh, is what you're doing lining up with what you want? You know what I mean? And this is why I go back to the whole thing about emotion, emotions and understanding. So what you're really talking about is one is being honest with yourself, but in order to be honest with yourself, you've got to have a certain amount of emotional awareness. True. But I don't think that's really been fostered in the scene. That's right. So when I kind of made my point, going back to 2014, when I went back, when I made that point and it got shut down, what that, what I really took from that. And even now when I reflect on it, is that people didn't really understand the importance of emotional well-being because yeah. they saw that as not going hard, mm. just being soft and and just basically just molly coddling people. Sure. But then what that means is, I mean, you've seen it, I've seen it, many people have come to this scene and burnt out. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I thought arts was a respite for people and it's almost like a bed mm. that's stopping you from sleeping. Well, if the bed is stopping you from falling asleep, then the bed is clearly not doing its job. Yeah. If the respite is burning people out, then this isn't doing its job. Mm. And the thing about it is, is like, if it's getting to the point now that people within the scene that are also coming for the respite, because a lot of people came in to feel the fulfillment, yeah. they're now making other people feel unfulfilled. Mm-hmm. We need to have a conversation. Yeah, and I think maybe more well i think i don't know like i think in places it's happening but like the the what's key for me is like the different um how do you say that like areas or mediums or arenas for different types of thing with art so it's like if you're competitive with dance and you love to compete and that's where you get your drive from you go there it's like if you need 
like emotional healing and stuff like that, you go there. If you want to just have fun with friends and have a few drinks and dance, you go there. And like, we kind of know where, so like if somebody ends up in the competition scene and they're just like, oh, I'm really upset and I don't really like this. It's like, oh, but you're in the wrong place. Go over there and you'll love it. And it's just like, let me call this guy and he's going to like tell you where to go. And like being more aware of like what those different avenues are. Because for me, it's like, and I feel like, I have good emotional, I feel like that's one of my strengths is like my emotional, um, like you said, awareness above my, most other things. I wish I had traits in other areas, nah. but my <laughs> emotional yeah, awareness tends, tends, yeah. yeah. Real, real, yeah. I, so I think for me, it's like, I, I'm always very self-aware and I'm always like, right, like I, it's pretty easy for me to figure out why I'm feeling a certain way. Yeah. To get over it is another story, but you know, I, I always kind of identify, ah, that's why I feel this way. Yeah, sure. And I think I've kind of split my um especially being someone that does different things outside of dance even like with photography video stuff like that right even with the podcast i know and i have a lot of conversations with lee about this i know that i can't express everything through one thing right and that uh, for me applies to like dance versus photography versus filmmaking or video or whatever so i'm like there's subjects that i would tackle with photography that I would never try to touch with like a theatre piece because I'm like I just don't want to speak about this through dance but I want to speak about it through photography because the language makes more sense or it's more suitable you know but I think even if you take that into a dance context it's like I'm not going to battle for the same reason I'm going to make a theatre piece and I'm not going to go to a jam and hang out and cipher for the same reason I'm going to make a theatre you know what I mean it's all it's different aspects of me and different um things that I get from it. Like one day I might be like, I am not in the mood to battle at all. I need to go to the jam and just see friends. I want to have a beer. I want to hang out. And then other days I'm like, no, I need to battle to like whatever I'm feeling, whatever this is. I like, I want to compete with someone. I want to do this. And it's like, I think it's true what you're saying. Like if you have that emotional awareness to know what you need and where you can get it and where you're not going to get it. Cause I think what I see a lot with them, this probably, I would assume you would agree, but like I see a lot of, younger kids who want to express their artistic side through battles and that's not the place to do it and i think Mm. there's some people that i know who are like fantastic poppers yeah i mean in all styles not even just popping fantastic dancers but and i've had this you know when i've um traveled to different places and i've seen people and and i've ciphered with people and i'm like in a cipher there was one I don't want to say where it was because I don't really want to say who I'm talking about. Yeah, but sure. um, we were ciphering for like four or five hours one night. And I was like, these people are monsters. I was like, we were doing it was mostly like hip hop and house dancers. Yeah. And I was like, what I'm seeing in front of me is like top level shit. Yeah. But I never see these people do well in battles yeah. ever. But they enter, yeah. but they, they don't they get through don't prelims. Get they yeah, lose yeah, in the yeah, first round. They yeah. don't have any name in the scene. Yeah. But I'm like, I've seen top level battlers and up close i've battled them i've ciphered with them and i've seen you guys and i'm like your skills wise you have that but in the battle arena it just falls falls short and i think there's the same in the reverse way i've ciphered or partied with people who are battle heads and you go to a party and you're like why do you why are you not having fun or like why like this is like a a, an r&b jam like why are you doing a full-on popping solo like can we just hang out and have a beer and talk like and it's like they it's the con- contextual thing that i think people miss and i yeah. think you know it, i'm not kind of like if you want to go and do a popping solo to r&b in the club yeah. fine like yeah, yeah. but if you know like oh, i'm here to show off and impress girls or whatever yeah but you know i think if you don't know what arena or what i don't know what the right word is but like what medium to put yeah each feeling in yeah. no, <laughs> you're going to end up with your wires crossed and feel like shit listen you're right it's it's because it, we're talking about communication now if i'm talking to a thousand people at a, a corporate event i'm going to be talking like this mm. i'm going to be projecting if i'm talking to somebody uh, a, a 13 year old teenager who's just told me that, that their mum's died yeah you know my body language is going to change you adapt appropriately. So what you're talking about is understanding where you, where we're communicating sure. and what you're trying to get out of it. Now, I'll go on to say this. I think part of the problem in the scene is a lot of these voices, and now we're talking about expect understanding these different uh, mediums. Unfortunately, I would say from a top level down, the narrative wasn't promoted in that way. Sure. So what was happening is we're talking about cl- f- uh, philosophies, clashes of philosophies. And unfortunately, I feel like people didn't feel like they had a choice. Yeah. People felt like the only way they were going to be celebrated 
was in this arena because from the leadership perspective, those were the narratives sure. that were being pushed. And people who were attempting to offer alternatives were being pushed. Mm -hmm. And so now what we're talking about is an infrastructure. We're talking about an infrastructure that says, okay, so we now identify that there's these problems, but how can we actively help to support these things? If we're about the culture, the culture has to, to, to be all of it. How can all of it be uh, expressed? What's happening now, we're getting to a point, and I've seen it, even when I go to like beautiful events like Summer Dance, and I mm -hmm. love Summer Dance, I love, there's loads of, of places I've been to. You meet a lot of younger generation dancers and they're watching you and with a m mindset of, are you as good as the best YouTube clip I've seen? <laughs> so you're not even present <laughs> yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's almost like, okay, so what can we do to, it's not about changing the narrative because that has its place, but how can we make people feel celebrated? When I'm listening to you talking, I'm not judging your accent based on right. the best uh, English, Queen's English. <laughs> yeah. I'm accepting you and I'm enjoying you. Yeah. We don't do that in dance. Mm. If you're not looking like green tech, if you're not smashing it like the latest hot person, yeah. that's how we're marking you. <sighs> yeah. Although, hmm. but do you feel like, I don't, I don't necessarily have an answer to this, but sure. I would question whether it's the the scenes, uh, like let's say like our responsibility as viewers to celebrate people, or is it those people's job to like put themselves in a, in the right, because I would say like if, and I've had this conversation with a lot of kids that sure. like, like I said, they're in the battle scene. They're like, oh, I'm not being appreciated, blah, blah, blah. Or they're not even doing well. And I'm like, I get it because I've ciphered with you and I've seen you do really well, but then in battles, you haven't got the right structure. And maybe you don't want to build that structure into your dance because it, it can like suffocate your dance in a way. Um, but in that case, I would say it's not, you're not going to get that recognition in the battle scene and you're not going to get that appreciation in the battle scene. So make a theater piece or go to like a class, you know, like start teaching yeah. or make like a concept video or like find your way to, to put yourself in the right place that people are going to go, ah, oh, sick. You know what I mean? So my, yeah, my response to that is this, not everybody has those skills to do what you're saying there right. because it takes a particular type of person to take that initiative. Mm -hmm. And I guess, but then there is no right and wrong answer. It's a sure. bit like this chicken and the egg. Like, yeah. for example, am I going to walk into a classroom and, and have a chat with people knowing that there's no one there? Mm. Or would I then carry on talking or would I stop? Would I take the initiative to take myself to another class? Mm. Or would I just think there's no one here, I'm going to allow it. Everybody's decision is going to be based sure. on their character type. From my, and I think what you've just proposed there, I think, I don't know if there is one answer. I think sure. there's, whichever way you go, there's always going to be a, a, a truth in what you're saying. Yeah. I, I guess from my perspective, my critique in reflection would be that attempts were made to put that in place right. and was almost shut down. Yeah. Do I can, know? from the era that I came into the scene, I can imagine that being the case. Yeah. You know? I think that was, I think when the, I think, I don't know, tell me if you think it's different now. Mm -hmm. I think it's maybe calmed down a little bit now. I feel like, yeah, maybe again, when I like, between 2007 and 10 when I was like young. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel like it was like either battle and represent the UK or don't. And I think when Monsters came in and I mean, even with G-Star when it was like, for G-Star I feel like, or, or not even G-Star, but like good for G-Star through good foot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Cause that's all they spoke about. So that's, that's, right. that's what I'm judging them on is that, that camp. But like they were about, crew like if you're a crew you battle every other crew monsters were about we all need to just battle each other even internally monsters that's it was right. like that's can right. i beat you it was like the competition aspect that's which right. i get and i'm actually someone that loves that as well you know so that never really necessarily negative affected me because i was like all right yeah, like, you know I, yeah, you, I grew you, up playing basketball so the switch was actually quite easy because i was like ah yeah this is this is how we play basketball you know we yeah. compete with our friends it's like you you don't go to the park and you know i mean for me anyway when i was growing up it was like you shoot around for a bit warm up and it's like all right we we playing five and five or yeah. like let's let's go yeah. um so that was easy for me but i did see that at the beginning, especially with that era starting to come in and there's starting to be more events and stuff. It was like, if, and I think this leads into the status that you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. It was like, if you don't battle or do something like, kind of like, what's the point? What's like, the point? why are yeah. you wasting our time? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I definitely remember it being a lot more, um, 
uh, not segregated, but like harshly, like if you're not this, you're that. Yeah, fuck yeah. Off kind of it's, thing. Exactly, a waste. It doesn't matter. Now it's funny. You just want to tap on something you said about the bottle. I didn't know that was your background yeah. possible, and that's interesting because when I interviewed Brooke and Dixon, one of the things that I wanted to get across in the interview is. Those guys come from a very competitive thing. Brooke yeah, Brooke did trampoline, right? That's right. Yeah. And and so he's used to that very stringent um, criteria of, yep. of judging. Yep. Dixon was in the youth West Ham football team. Right. So he's used to that. Sports. Um, right, programs, there you go. Yeah. Whereas for me, like I was I was into football. I mean, Kenrick was two years below me in my primary school. Oh, in sick. my secondary school. He'll vouch for you. I, yeah. I was known as the guy that once I had the ball, you ain't getting it off me. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But my, my thing in terms of competitism was, I was the underdog. I always loved, if I saw mm. the team, you know what is like, everyone wants to go on the popular side. Yeah. I'd be the guy that got on the team that only had five, five players in yeah, the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five against 15. But in my head, like the team's lost and everyone's like, oh, but in my head, I'm like, yeah, but I murked you, I murked you. Yeah, right, right. Like that, you found your victories in the loss. Somehow. Right. Yeah. So like from my style personally, my, my competitism was, Okay, I've lost a battle, but you can't cobra like me. Mm, right, 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 right. That's how I measured it. So then that's when I was beginning to realise that even how we measure success and validity and standard is very two-dimensional. But just on that, how come you didn't then find the battle scene fun in the same way you did with football? Like, okay, the, like... Because it was never about, it was never about scoring goals for me. That's why I never mm. played for football team. So right. I would even go on to say that at the time that I was in school, so... I never learned the art of football in terms of the team strategy. And I wish I did. Right, right, right. But I never had the competitive, the competitive nature. So if someone was shouting at me, clear the ball, I'm not responding because I don't uh, respond to people shouting at me. Yeah, right, 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 right. But everybody that was in my year group would tell you that when I had the ball, you weren't getting the, I was yeah. known for that. I would take the whole team on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I didn't have that case. So in the end, I got overlooked in the sense that I didn't have the confidence to enter into a football team. All right. And... Only those who was around me knew what I can do. But beyond that, you'd never know. Mm. You put me in a, an 11 side pitch and I wouldn't thrive. But were you, did you want to thrive or not really? You were just like, I'm just happy doing this thing for fun. Like let's say when you're playing football. So if, if I go back to my 13, 14, 15 year old self, my narrative would have been, I'd love to show everybody how good I am, mm. but I don't have what it takes to enter that arena. Right. In order to get to that level, I'm going to have to take all of that and I, and, I, and I ain't got the confidence. Right, right, right. I don't like people shouting at me. I don't think I've got what it takes when actually what it was is I would have just needed an adult that understood me to bring it out of me. Mm. So what I'm saying is when I look back at myself, my competitive was all, my, I always had an alternative way of being competitive. Sure. I now understand at the age of 42, but when I was 23 doing, or 26, sorry, and winning a champ, I didn't understand that. Mm. I just thought, Okay, I've won. So now I've got to win more. Yeah, right, right, right. Do you know what I mean? So like if you had this mentality at that time, you could have been like, oh, it's okay. I might lose, but I'll still be the guy that can do this. I would or... have navigated it differently. It would have been a longer journey. <laughs> yeah. But it meant that I would have understood when I'm feeling maybe triggered, when I'm feeling a little bit like insecure, I can work around that. Didn't know that then. Yeah, sure. You know, um, there's something else that you also mentioned as well about um, actively, because you mentioned a couple of points. Um I don't even know, but if you said about uh, three things in one. Sorry, <laughs> I don't remember. Um, wasn't it the basketball thing? You said about the basketball thing, but you said something um, about, uh, oh yeah, that was it. Representing the style or the, the style, crew. the crew. So yeah. with the good foot thing, I think it was very interesting because what, <laughs> what the G style, particularly through Slick Dog, there's, there's almost an element of, if I can say respectfully, trolling. Right. <laughs> He's like, he, he loves a troll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, Underneath it, there was a, a legitimate narrative. What he was trying to say is that the scene is too biased on the EB thing. Sure. And he wanted to widen that conversation. And in a sense, he's achieved that. Yeah, like like dynamite achieves clearing a path. Like yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna balance the scene, but by just with chaos. Yeah, with you chaos. know. And he wasn't the only one that did that. And they didn't necessarily so Cool Pockets did it with his 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 videos, and that wasn't necessarily done in a it was just more done in an informative way. Like Who? The Sorry? Fact, Cool Pockets from Chain Reaction. He done two videos, um Underground Dance Masters one, which was more focused on the lockers and EB, mm -hmm. but then after further research, he then realized that there was a whole journey before then. Right. So he done Underground Dance Masters 2, which he never released in the end. I don't know why right, he didn't, because right. it was very informative. But those two were, in my head, were very pivotal to me understanding there's a journey beyond that. Mm. The good foot lot being young, I think they just fed, they, they were just uh, fed into his troll energy. 
And I think there's also something which I still see now, but there's something about like, in a way like being like a warrior of the culture that especially younger people love to jump into. And I think to be honest with you, I see the same thing with like societal causes and stuff. Like there's something, tell me if this comes across wrong, but like there's something romantic about jumping into a Black Lives Matter protest and like fighting because you're like, you're not wrong in any way. You're like, black people need equality. I'm here to like, I'm here to fight the powers. And it's like, there's something romantic about being there and being able to just almost like bulldoze any nuance out of it and be like, I'm right. There's a oppressive power. So if you're, and, and it's not necessarily the same thing, but I think it's the same type of romance where you're like, somebody's done us wrong. I'm in G style and the Boogaloo's did us wrong. Let's get them. And it's like, you know, it can be whatever. I've seen that in hip hop. I've seen that in, in a lot of other styles where it's like, you, you get wrapped up in this thing of like, I saw it with hip hop with um a lot of people with this whole thing of, um I guess, I don't know if it's similar with popping, but like the way Elite Force have said hip hop is supposed to be done. Like, it funny. reminds me of what people say about the way- So there's kind of conversations that are happening within the hip hop community right now. Right. No, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think less so now right. for me. Like, I mean, I'm not so much in the world scene, but- from what I remember from when I was around or when I was battling more and having those conversations, it was more like, yeah, like 2010 or something. Mm. Like when I first started, no one know, knew what hip hop was. It was called New Style, first of all. Yeah. And it was like New Style Finals at Just To Be. And like, I legit remember asking multiple people here, like Static, Kemrick, Ricardo, um, Ivan, like, what yeah. is this style? Yeah. I get what popping is. Like yeah. we all kind of knew in like 2008, 2009. Yeah. Yeah. Boogaloo, this hits, yeah. Tuts is kind of part of it, Waves yeah. is kind of part of it. Yeah. All right, cool, I get the idea. Yeah. Hip hop is like, what is the what is this style? And yeah. no one really had an answer or everyone had very different answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then there was the whole thing where the New School Dictionary came out or we found, it uh, came out in the UK and everyone was like, oh, like not only does this explain what it is, it explains all the stuff. It's like a little cheat sheet. And, and there was a whole thing about people, um, without going into that, like hiding it away and not yes, sharing it. Yes, I remember that when that all comes from, yeah. Piss pissed me off, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so then then it was like with hip hop, and you can tell me how this uh, parallels in yeah. popping, but like, so then with hip hop, it was like, okay, cool. Now we know what this shit is. Now this new school dictionary is kind of being shared around. Like we know, oh, there's all these names to the moves and blah, blah, blah. And it was like a case of, of um, oh, that's what this shit is, right? Then we saw a lot of the French dancers and we're like, but they're, but they're not doing that shit. Mm. Like, and I think there was a lot of like, especially us, like me and, and Mustafa and like, um, you know, the guys that I was doing hip hop with in those times, we mm. really identified with the French dance because we were like, I know it's not like what is supposed to be in the textbook, but it looks fucking cool. Like yeah, yeah. some of my early inspirations was like Salas, if you know right. him. And like yes, Salas, yeah, yeah. People like that who it's not, you know, that you don't see him doing the straight up foundations and stuff. And this is why me and Kieran ended up having a rivalry at the beginning because... Kieran was like by the books, um, elite force, that kind of thing. Right, right. And I was like more inspired by the French dancers. So right. then we used to, yeah. he used to tell me I'm not doing hip hop properly. Okay, okay. And I was like, stop, like, uh, just doing everything the yeah, <laughs> elite right, force okay, say. Okay, okay, and then okay. I think now we kind of met in the middle and like, we, you know, we've, I mean, obviously we're, we're like super close friends now, yeah. but I think that was the whole rivalry is like, elite force says you need to do mm. the bounce and you need mm. to do that. And yeah. I'm doing like probably like shitty pop you know i was taking the tuts and the yeah, waves and stuff yeah, not really doing a bounce yeah. and just kind of walking around being super static yeah, and they yeah. were like that's not what hip-hop's supposed to be yeah. and i'm like yeah but like this guy's super dope this guy's super dope like yeah. ha- like the the examples weren't matching the what the ideology is like it's supposed to be like this yeah. and it's like yeah but you guys keep voting for that so you how are you telling me i'm doing it wrong but voting for him and saying he's dope right yeah, yeah. and i feel like I don't know, maybe there's a parallel and popping with like that there type is, of thing. There is a parallel. And um, again, that can go in so many directions. But as you're speaking, one that comes to mind straight away is this argument around the whole idea of what popping is. Versus mm. this, this whole umbrella term versus this kind of singular. Yeah. And it's very, dif- it's very difficult. I mean, for me, I'm trying to just listen into the conversation. I'm not even trying to have a say because I think a lot of these balls, from what I'm seeing so far, there's one guy called D Soul who I had a conversation with recently and he said something really interesting. People's relationship with words 
determined how the words are used. So for example, back in the day, what is called happy feet and what's, we'd call it shuffle when I was in right. the I, I, I learned it from other people, it was shuffle. Yeah. Now, that might not be the correct word in terms of the American history, but essentially in that space, that was what how people understood it. Right. That was their language vocabulary. So like pop, the, the EB narrative and particularly through Pop and Pete, you know, the pop is a very specific technique and it has its own thing. You've got to be, it's rhythmical, you're, you're tense and relaxing various parts of your body to the beat. That's the pop. That's it. Um, whereas some people would argue, well, actually popping also includes all these various sub styles. All I can say is when I'm in a battle, if it's called a popping event, I also know that people are getting extra points if they're doing Toy Man, Scarecrow, and all these other things. So what is really going on? Sure. Because like, for example, if I'm popping and I'm just tensing in my arms and I do that really good, but that's all I'm doing yeah. versus someone who then decides to then do these shapes. By that defi definition, that shouldn't, the, the fact they did that shouldn't hold any more weight. Yeah. So if the only thing we're judging on is the pop or the hit, which yeah. you're not supposed to call it, but <laughs> that, that movement, then yeah, then why are you getting more points for this vocabulary? And how does that weight against? Absolutely. And I think the problem is whoever started the whole battles and judging events in that model were not the same people who were the teenagers doing these dances sure. as a kid. So there's a lot of disjointed conversations with different agendas because you see at the same time, OGs are having their conversations amongst themselves because essentially it's your inner child that's just talking as an adult wanting to get your recognition. Yeah. And that's not saying a, dis a, dis a, 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 um, a disrespectful way. No. It's clearing up. It's moving on from certain grievances you may have had then. Yeah. But then essentially a lot of people also getting paid by events. Mm. So how do you navigate these conversations in a way that still doesn't jeopardize the relationships you have commercially? And this goes back to what I'm saying. We haven't understood the re relationship, the difference between our corporate aspect of us and our community aspect. They're yes. very much intertwined. Yeah. And so not only do we have to be super honest and super honest doesn't necessarily mean people are lying. You just sometimes have to be aware of your own ego. Mm. You have to be aware of your own insecurities. I wasn't aware of my own insecurities. I now I'm aware. Yeah. And it just needs, otherwise what's going to happen is we're going to be continuing to have these conversations until it's going to implode. And people, the younger generation will say, do you know what? Forget you. I'm doing my own thing. Mm. And then we will have no weight. How do you see, how, like speaking on all this, like with the different kind of weighting of judging and stuff, like, if you were to judge in a battle context or even battle in a battle context, how do you see the weighting or how do you see, like, do you have a one way that you're like, I think this is the way popping should be done? Or are you more like, it's like, how, what's your view on that sure. whole structure? That's a good question. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a student of the EB style. Mm -hmm. I came in that era. Um, but essentially when I first was inspired by popping, I was inspired by popping taco mm -hmm. and, and, and boogaloo shrimp who are, Slightly different. Shrimp is more like a, a, he's like a student of animation and bopping. Mm -hmm. Taco is a student of animation and EB style. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm kind of the, the merge. Yeah. Um, I think it's very difficult to answer that question. I'll tell you why, because you look at the Oakland style. Oakland is the, the first version of these, just for the sake of the argument, let's just call it as Poppin' Todd labels it illusion mechanical illusionary dances Got ya. oakland is one of the first places but their style would not hold weight in the competition not mm. because it's not good it's because for a lot of people people like dynamics agility so what they're doing pure funky internal the feel if i did if someone did that a young person did that but they, they won't get nowhere okay which is sad mm. so the question is is can you really judge these styles amongst each other yeah fairly yeah um i'm an eb student my knowledge is more in eb my knowledge isn't as up to speed with with, with strutting mm. so by default there's going to be some degree of biasness yeah sure do you know um but would you say that like do you view it that you have like pop let's say popping is the umbrella term or we have an umbrella regardless of what you call it and then it, within that, you have these different types of styles or do you feel like it's like um, the Boogaloo style is, is the umbrella? 
You know what I mean? Is there yeah, like, yeah, outs- sure. yeah. like, for example, in your opinion, yeah. could you enter a pop in battle and be like, I'm not going to do anything related to Boogaloo and only do other things or, or the EB star. I'm going to only do other things. Like I'm going to only do robot. Is that valid? And, or I'm going to only do tutting and waving. You know what I mean? Okay. So if I've answered your, if I've understood that properly, I mean, if I was judging personally, mm. I would look at how deep they go into what they're doing. Right. But I think that is, I'm answering that only within the space of where we're at right now. Ooh, okay. I almost feel like there needs to be like, if I look at Hip Hop International, one thing I do like about their judging scheme, from my experience, is it's very specific mm-hmm. and it's very thorough. So there needs to be a thorough, uh, what's the word, thorough? Like criteria? Criteria. Yeah. Um, of what we're looking for. But in order for that to happen, there needs to be a conversation. Because you see, Pete would talk about popping as being something that was very much Fresno led. Um, Bay Area guys would not necessarily say that they're popping. Mm. However, you still see that muscle tension. Yeah, Oakland guys often will have much more of a dime stop to what they do. But yet everybody's kind of mixing all these different techniques with each other. So what you're judging is sometimes a mishmash of all these different influences. Sure. So I feel like until, two things, until the OGs have the sorts of compl- conversations that gets the clarity that we need, all the judging is going to remain faltered. Yeah. Or independently, there has to be its own judging criteria that has to be done while the OGs are still working it out. And it's going to upset some people. Yeah. But if you want the fairness that people are saying they want in the competition, then that's what you're going to do. I, I can't imagine that it's going to be able to come from people who are so... Like, I can't imagine any OGs in any style being able to have the presence of mind to, like, put any egos aside and be like... Imagine, like, you grew up with this, believing this one thing to set it aside and go, like, all right, well, your thing is as fair as... My, like... I don't know that, I mean, fuck do I know, but like, I don't know that that's going to happen. But yeah. I definitely know what you mean about like, maybe someone else coming yeah. in and being like, right, let me hear everybody's story yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to decide what yeah. I think the, how this works. Like your thing came in after, yeah. so it's less of a foundation, you know, whatever, and try and figure out some sort of timeline. And and the thing is, even on top of that, Luke, like the problem is now is that we have all been conditioned to see popping execute in a particular way. Yep. And um, I don't know when that come. I mean, I would probably say, um, Pete's style as EB has more influence, the most influence. Sam's approach, which is the purest in the EB style, if someone was doing Sam's style, really wouldn't get that same respect. I see a lot of people, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I see a lot of poppers that look like Pete. Yeah. Pete. That like have like the same style, not even just like what he does and his ideology, but like the way he dances. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Because you see, it's... It's about the dynamics and, you know, from a very, um, I don't know, untrained eye, dynamics keeps people engaged, movement. Yeah. So all of us, ex- Taco for me is my favourite, is, right. is my favourite popper. But what Taco does at his deepest level, I remember saying that when I, when I saw the level he takes it to, I was like, but if he did this, if no one knew who he was and he did this in a battle, mm-hmm. he's not going to get anywhere. Mm. Because our perception in from that, unfortunately, has now been conditioned to see in this way. I even go so far as to say the reverse applies, where I think there's people who, and again, anyone listening can critique my knowledge of popping. <laughs> um, but I think there's people who get further because they look like what we think good popping looks like, but they're actually not that good. Say that again. Say that like, again. I, post that. I feel like this about some like older people that I've seen pop, right? when I've traveled in different countries where people are like, oh, they're an OG, they're amazing. Like, look how good they are. And I'm like, but I, like, I'm not the most trained eye in terms of popping, but I'm not a casual fan. Like I, I've been, you know, it's 10 something years, 15 years I've been in the scene. And I'm like, I think they're shit. Like they're not doing anything good, but because that's what an OG popper should look like, or that's what a experienced popper should look like. Yeah. They do better because it's like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've yeah. seen some like young kids yeah. who I'm like, that round just smoked that guy. Yeah. But because that guy has like, uh, he's been around longer and he yeah. looks like, yeah. you know, like I said, this, this thing. So I think it's, it's both ends where it's like, okay, if the really experienced good yeah. poppers, yeah. like you're saying about yeah. Taco, yeah. 
entered they wouldn't get anywhere but also yeah. sometimes the people that shouldn't get anywhere do, do get anywhere and it's more it, about yeah. yeah like you said us recognizing what popping looks like as opposed to like right what are the rules because i think even like some um what's that dude who does like animation and stuff like non non-stop non-stop yeah 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 people yeah. like that or like blueprint yes who are like really amazing poppers but we don't recognize what they do as the typical boogaloo yes, style yes, popping yes, and it's yes. like you see someone like Slim Boogie yes. overcome that because yes. he's just stuck around for so long that yes. we've just accepted him yes. Yes. and Salah. Yes. And I think, I remember, I, it pro he probably was dealing with it for years before, but like in 2007, 8, 9, yeah. people were like, oh, Salah doesn't pop, Salah yeah, doesn't yeah, do popping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, does he not do popping or is it just not the popping that we're used to seeing? Yeah, yeah. And I think you see, like, especially with Slim and, and Salah, because they stick around for so long, we just go, you okay, accept. cool, yeah, yeah, I accept it. And it just shows yeah. the kind of, Hypocrisy, because if we were looking at like a tick list of yeah, what point. should popping be, yeah, first point. of all, I don't, we don't even know what that fucking tick list should yeah. look like. <laughs> yeah. If we did, it would be like, all right, so we have the, the regular hit to keep the time or whatever, the regular pop to yeah. keep the time. It's of a certain quality, of a certain strength. Yeah. We use this kind of mechanical, th like there's all these sort of things. And it's like, even if you look at like ticking off how many like different like toy man and all these things uh, that people do, it's like, well, someone like Slim Boogie, ticks all of those just not in the way that you're the used to that seeing you're it. it yeah yeah so yeah, it's like yeah. it, it, and i think there's people like you said that like it's a good point don't get far yeah and it's like it's not that they're not doing pop it's i feel like the same with hip-hop it's yeah. like similar similar ish but it's like the, it's not that you're not doing the style it's just that you're not doing it how we like to see you That's do it. it yeah i mean it's you know, this and these are the conversations. Sorry, sorry, I did what you said before. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. <laughs> these are the, these are the, uh, the conversations that need to be had because, again, like, you know, you just mentioned about, say, maybe a certain OG that really shouldn't be making the progress they're getting. There's an almost an element of respect that comes maybe. Um, yeah. And so you adjust your thinking uh, to bro, adapt to that, you know. I that's, It irritates me so much because I think it's, I think it's, well, okay, no, I don't think it's wrong. I think that's not how I would run a competition. I don't think you should judge for someone. You should you should give people points based on respect. Sure. What did you do on the day? Yeah. Like it, for me, it's like you should be able to like um, you know, like on a video game when you like do the creator player and it's yeah. just a blank. Yeah. If these are two blank bodies and they did those rounds, yeah. who would you vote for? Which was yeah. a better round? But I know people that have argued with me on this and have said context matters and it's the whole story and it's the whole thing. Like, yeah. do you judge? a popping battle based on what the person does when they're not battling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like It's faulted full, because full, you can't, if yeah. I don't know that person, I will, of course I'm not going to have the context. Exactly. And it's also, I mean, it goes back to like martial arts. Like you have a sensei who's been teaching for a whole bag of years. He's yeah. 70 years old, but you're not going to put him in the Olympics. <laughs> and if get he gets busted. knocked out, he gets knocked he's out. Get like, knocked out. <laughs> and so, and, but at the same time, and I think maybe this is, maybe this is part of the reason why that's happening. The sensei is still respected. Sure. And they've got their role. So if whatever happens, they're there. And I think maybe what seems to happen is an undertone in the scene that unless you can deliver in the here and now, your validity goes. Mm. So then now what you have is people trying to stay relevant. And maybe there's a subconscious guilt that feels like I need to keep this person here because they need to be honored, but there is no space in the community mm. to honor these people. So if I vote against this sensei, yes. then I'm kind of giving him the boot out the door. That's what I'm saying. As opposed to just respectfully saying you lost that one, but be because this you're is still the man. Yeah. And this is, and it goes back, you know, in a way what you're saying now is all intertwined with things I've said before. I'd go on to say this, there was a time when, for example, like for someone like myself, yeah. and I would say there was other people, I mean, I would say even Jitsu. At one point, we were very much the full-time teachers in the scene, mm. but as a scene, we wasn't respected mm. and supported. So in the end, we're having to dance our way into validation. Sure. But then that has nothing to do with our quality of ability to teach. And the fact that if young people are coming through the door, we were, we were, we had the, the teaching qualities. Yeah. I was in the education system. Jitsu just picked up the way of teaching. So what I'm saying is in the end, because the scene isn't almost organized or designed in a way to say, well, look, okay, this is what this is. And in this space, we can be as roof, not even ruthless, but like you know, like you said, martial yeah. arts, if you get bus up, there's no <laughs> interpretation. Sure. You're, you're on the floor, you're yeah, buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't interpret that any more than that. <laughs> so it's the same with dance. You can enter into that arena going, if you lost, you lost. Yeah. But this is your space. So now the, the lines ain't blurred. Judges ain't under pressure to still honor rather, rather than doing their job. Yeah. People are not walking off feeling salty because they've they they, they wanted this love in that arena when yeah. it doesn't work. And so I think um the street dance scene as a whole, but I would speak because we're talking about popping, just needs 
there needs to be conversations that allows us to organize ourselves and understand and establish what we have and where we're trying to go so that it matches what it is that we're saying. Yeah, I think that's, you know, I had a really um, part of the conversation I had with, you know, Neek from The Ruggeds. Mm hmm. He was at the last episode, okay. and um, so everyone go check that out if you haven't. <laughs> little <laughs> plug, little plug yeah, there. Right, it, yeah. There was no point. I just wanted to plug that. No, um, he because he organizes um, World B Boy Classic, and he said he doesn't want to implement these like super strict judging or not strict, but like super um, in uh, in depth judging criteria, and he doesn't want to invite the best battlers. He wants to invite the most interesting people. And like, he wants it to, he wants to like acknowledge that it's not going to be like necessarily a fair jam, but it's going to be fun. exciting. You're going to love being there. And I think that's, that was dope for me. Cause I'm like, Oh cool. Like he's not saying like in that context, like screw the Olympics, screw Red Bull or whatever. And he's not saying like, Oh, my jam's the best jam in the world. He's just yeah. saying, that's being taken care of. And he said that he was like, I'm glad somebody's doing that <laughs> with like Olympic break in and all that. But he's like, I don't want my jam to be that. I want to create this space where we can come here and it's a different type so that we have all those avenues, you know? hundred um, percent. I'm glad that these yeah. conversations are happening because I think it's about time that we, because the thing is street dance in, in, in many ways, street dance, I would oh, actually, what I'm going to say may sound quite, Anyway, I'll say it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're moving into a place that if we're not dangerous, we're, we're becoming irrelevant. Because mm -hmm. in terms of the mainstream music now, kids listen to something else with a completely different rhythm speed. Yeah. If you think about drill, yeah. the rhythm yeah, is... Yeah. T -t 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 -t. So the street dance foundations that we apply doesn't even fit that music. No, it's like it's supposed to be on like boom bap or like right. you know, whatever. Yeah. So now it's moving into the realms of what Lindy Hop is, which is almost a cult culture that when you go into that space, this music is yeah. appreciated with these sets of dancing, this way of dressing, all of that. So if we want to protect that, we have to really start to get our act together to understand how we can be in not inclusive to tick the boxes in the PC way, but as a scene that sustains itself. I've sure. always said that a scene protects itself when you get, when people feel good about it, you don't have to tell them to protect it. If huh. Bro, I love that you just said that. Sorry. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> that gave me like a bodily reaction. Yeah, yeah, Bro, yeah, yeah. I always, like my thing is like, I, I think I say a very similar thing, but in a very different way, but yeah. like, uh, you shouldn't have to like a culture if you force a culture it's not a culture anymore no. a culture is by nature something that happens organically that's right so don't tell me we have to protect the culture because if the culture is changing the culture is changing yes. and the culture is going in a different direction but yeah. if we force it we're no we're now a club we're, cl we're yeah. a club that yeah. says here's the rules that's to be right. in my club yes. it's not yes. a culture anymore right. because hip-hop culture changed from disco and funk and yeah. wh whatever came before it that's right, right. And if it wasn't allowed, it would still be disco and funk and all that fun. stuff, Actually, right? They won't be but doing this, yeah. It's been allowed to adapt and they were allowed to do these innovations. So as much as you might want to change the name on what's happening, don't like force me to stay in this. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, so yeah, don't sorry. Don't force you to feel and experience this, what it is. No, absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, again, I go back to something I've always been an advocate for, nurture, protect, look after the people yeah. that are, because if you're not looking after them, you're not looking after the scene. Mm. You know, you're just looking after the name. And the thing is, it's something that you said earlier on, you mentioned um, BLM to talk, yeah. to use an analogy. And I, I really, um, that was interesting because I've used an analogy of racism in the sense yeah. that the legacy of the impacts that we're speaking about, particularly when you've come in, although actively are not being demonstrated, the legacy of it is still there. Yeah. So we're still at a place where things have happened, things hasn't been spoken about, still a bit of a soft, uncomfortable spot. Sure. And we need to get to that place to really um, change. In the same way that with racism, I think people feel in the UK that if we just don't talk about it for long enough, it's going to change. It's going to go away. But yeah. it's not. The legacy is there. You can't, if you don't know the legacy is there, you wouldn't even know that you might be even fulfilling it. Sure. Might, so we have to talk about it. So I feel like, yeah, yeah the conversations for the scene it we need to have some maybe difficult ones yeah where we can look at stuff and understand okay this is where my head was at this is what i thought the scene was because again i'm i do you know what i'm saying what i'm seeing i'm seeing burnt out soldiers i'm i'm hearing stories about people even high profile people that we know that i can see salty vibes coming through mm. because we didn't take time to nurture the scene yeah we were too busy 
getting this machine going. This isn't a machine as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's yeah, a culture. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, I hear. Man. I think even like what you said about the thing with you and Jitsu as teachers, mm. I think it also kind of comes into that battle thing because at the moment I feel like, or maybe not at the moment, but maybe a little bit earlier, it's like the most reason people wanted to go to class was to win battles. So it's like if you're not winning the battles, why am I going to go to your class yeah. if I want to win the battles? It's, you know what I mean? Yeah, but absolutely. even though it's like we have won the battles or we yeah. could win the battles, but yeah. we just don't want to, then it's like, okay, cool. But then I also think the other side of that is, which I've always kind of questioned in myself is like the the battle sector is such a strong, um, I guess, outlet or platform to to output your dance, right? And it's like, and this kind of goes into my thing with hip hop where it's like, if these are social dances and they're supposed to be done in the club, why do I need to learn them in a class? <laughs> like, why do I need to pay you money to go to your class yeah, it's a good, it's a good, to be it's able a good to question. just, to learn some stuff? Because there's no, in a battle, there's yeah. rules and yeah. there's there's success or failure. Yeah. So there's stuff that I need to know yeah. and I need to be prepared. In a club, there's no success or failure. Yeah. There's no rules. Yeah. I, there's, you can't tell me I'm doing yeah. the running man wrong in a club. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like no, uh, yeah. in a it's battle like, you can. It's like telling someone, I guess they're doing a the migraine skank wrong. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. who gives a shit. Like yeah. even if you yeah. are doing it wrong, yeah. no one gives it. It's a club. You, yeah. Are you having fun? You're yeah. doing it right. Yeah. Like yeah. so, I think this is the thing where it's like, I guess maybe not understanding. I guess maybe the scene, not and this again, like I said, this is something I question. Not understanding the link of why do you need to improve or learn more to not battle? Like what is the reason to like why like my popping level should be fine to just go and yeah. cipher with people. Yeah. Of course, because yeah. yeah. there's no judgment. Yeah. I'm just hanging out. Like if Arkbar was still around yeah. and that was the only thing and there was no battles, yeah. I don't think I'd train yeah. or <laughs> I'd just go and dance and cool, have fun. But then when battles come in, it's like, okay, cool. I've got a, oh, Marvel is better a robot than me. This guy's better. So if I want to beat them, I've got to go and learn from someone that can teach me robot or animation or whatever the thing might be. And then I've got to train it. You know what I mean? Yeah. For that. So yeah. then I think that's maybe where people are like, in every style, I feel like the same same sort of stuff with hip hop, you know. Well, now that, see now, hmm, that's good. That's good because now my evolution in terms of my mentality as a teacher is is this. I found all my most impactful uh, things, teaching experience, teaching scenarios in the scene has all been outside of a classroom. Mm. Yeah. All the different people that I've spoken about, even if people haven't necessarily maybe mentioned me publicly or whatever, yeah. it's being done over the phone, yeah. through chatting like DMs, yeah. or just hanging out and doing the moves there and then. I think I've come to realize that, again, culture, within the culture, maybe it isn't about the classes being part of that experience. I'm moving more towards classes being something that's more part of my corporate story when mm -hmm. I'm going out to places where yeah. people don't necessarily want to be part of a culture. They just want an experience. Yeah. They pay and for that hour, they get that experience. Or I'm using it in creative ways to talk about leadership, sure. emotional, wealth, all of that is packaged. Yeah. In the scene, when I'm teaching, because again, one of my problems was because I wasn't making money, I'm kind of like, people don't even want to pay me in the scene. I've done so much. And then I realized maybe the scene isn't the place to make money. And I think mm. this is the danger. I, I noticed that narrative started to creep in, particularly around the Britain's Got Talent era. I don't know about you. When a diversity won and then Flawless also saw success, that was a time when I remember an accelerated narrative around making money. Mm -hmm. And it was almost done in this very, I'll use your word, romantic way. Yeah. Where, you know, if you do it, it's possible. You just do carve your own future. Yeah. But then I realised in the way that we say that we want this scene to exist, it's incredibly hard to make money and mm -hmm. feel fulfilled. And how does that even look in this space where I'm yeah. trying to make money? Then you're my potential rival, but I'm your mate. And I'm siphoning with you today, but I'm in an audition with you tomorrow. You might get the job. I might get the job. I've stopped you from getting opportunity. All of these dynamics. I feel like for me, when I, st when I kind of made a decision that I really want to make my money elsewhere, it means it can go. It goes back to what the scene was to me 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. Just a place for me to learn and feel good about this with minimum expectations. Yeah. And I think somehow, if as a scene we can get back to that place, 
there'd be less of this kind of bickering and mm. this undertone talking because then of course people have differences at society but it's just I don't know I don't know I'm not I'm not trying to say let's make a perfect space but I just think it means people's experiences within this space becomes a lot more it does what it's designed to do sure I think one thing I, I reckon as well is like we have maybe as as equally as we've benefited, we've also equally not benefited as a battle scene from mm. being so closely linked to the commercial dance scene in this country. Because a lot of us are from that world first. Like if a kid starts dancing in general in this country, nine times out of ten, they start in at Studio 68 or bass, right? They find something like they might find popping or hip hop. Or something That's probably more there. of your of your generation. Sure, and migrant, afterwards, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now that yeah, all these things are big. Like maybe at the beginning there was more yeah. of like a cultural thing, but I yeah. think now it's like this the this commercial scene is so big and it, it encompasses so much that it's like yeah, everyone uh, a lot of people from yeah my generation upwards. At least if they didn't start there, they like. They, maybe they're not from London, but if you're from London, yeah. a lot of people, the first thing is like, oh, I went to a studio, took some classes and I went, I was a choreo dancer, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think even the, the battle scene growing next to the commercial scene, there's this whole thing of like making money and it being so next to us, the whole like, while we're doing stuff, we're here, oh, this person's on tour with this person, That's this right. person's doing this, right. this person's making money, you know? And then it's like, our scene is like, oh, should we, should we? You know what I mean? And we deserve it. We're studying to do this art form. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of and thing. there's always this thing about like, um, not always, but there's a lot of freestyle dancers talking shit about choreo. Oh, they can't freestyle. And then yeah. choreo dancers being like, well, you can't fucking do choreo. Yeah. And, you know, and it's yeah. like, actually from my perspective, I feel like I kind of straddled both scenes, not yeah. the commercial scene, but more the yeah. choreo scene. Yeah. But I feel like. What was the name of your crew when I first met you? Toybox? What? Yeah. That's it. And uh, you had, you had the school. white, you had the white guy. What was his name Tav? again? Yeah, oh, come yeah, on yeah. Now. yeah, okay, yeah, that's it, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I feel like choreo dancers never really cared about the battle scene, no. like they think it's cool, but like even now, when I speak to people that I really like choreo heads, they're like, oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. But I feel like freestyle dancers are often like, oh, these choreo dancers can't do yeah, shit, right. and it's like right. it feels like we're very like looking yeah. at them for like, that's right, and they're just out there making money, that's right. But that's their focus is to make money. And it's yeah. like, I, I know what you're saying is like knowing what we want what is like, yeah. okay, we're here, but you're looking over there saying, why aren't we making that's money right. like they are? But it's like, but do you want to be? Because if right. so, go over there. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that, especially like, um, say someone like Gavin uh, from who was in Soul Mavs. I don't know if he still is, but like he was a great B-boy. I think he still is a great B-boy, but he's doing a lot of work. Like he's working for Zoo Nation doing that tour and he's like working as a dancer. So he, he was like, I want to, live as a dancer I, I haven't spoken to him about this but he f made a decision to do that more than i see him in battles I, again i could be wrong gavin could be out there smoking people but i think he's more in the world of making money so sure. it's like cool he knew what yeah. he wanted yeah. made a decision took his skill set went there and made money whereas yeah. like some people are here broke yeah. complaining that they're not making money or or trying to make money in the community side in of things and then sort of way yeah and you're like in a way like fucking it up for other people because you're bringing that energy, energy in yeah, the wrong yeah. place yeah. and i think i don't think it's i don't what i'm saying is i don't think it's wrong to like make money in the battle scene yeah. i just think it's wrong if you don't know how and how, why, you're, yeah, doing why you're doing it do you know absolutely. what i mean and i mean and you know is there re realistically for what options we have is there really enough money for everybody to make money i mean how many diversities can you have in england sure do you know what i mean yeah. and, and 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 also it's like you talk you're talking to a lot of these ogs most of these well, I would probably argue all these OGs had jobs. It was only yeah. when the second wave came, or for example, when people like Pete and them were lucky to have the opportunities, yeah. did they um, have a chance to do this full time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, it's selling this romantic idea of just making money full time. Yeah, for some people it may be possible, but actually for some people, you know, even this whole thing of, if you're not dedicating your life to this culture, you ain't down for the culture. Mm. Actually, some people might be just happy if they had their job in Sainsbury's and then after work they came. You know, sure. They don't have to be at every event. They don't have to be up to date with everything because, you know, that train spotter that loves to stand on <laughs> on the on Houston platform, he's probably not he's probably got a day job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that yeah. he's got he can afford to buy it's a, a hobby. notepad. It's a fun hobby. There yeah. you go. And it's and it lingers. And it, but then again, what happens is when you put too much pressure, like I did, on the culture, you you start to to expect more. So when things started to change for me and I began to realize actually I have to really reinvent 
or, or return, not even re-rank, return back to what my relationship was, is I was happy at that stage. What changed is when I started to put more expectation than it can offer. Mm -hmm. So it's like me getting upset with a three-year-old for not, for not being able to tell me about <laughs> physics. I should yeah. understand what I'm dealing with yeah, and, and then and I'll get exactly what I want from sure. it. And so once dancers understand what it is they're entering and why they are, they'll get exactly what they want from it. 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, I even find this, there's a few poppers that I know, or we, I'm talking about popping just because you're here, but yeah. like dancers in general who, this is a really specific example, but like, again, like who are amazing in ciphers, don't do well in battles. And we were having these conversations recently and being like, how is this person so good, but they keep getting beaten by that guy or that girl? You know, it's like, what? Like, I've seen them both dance a lot and she's way better than mm. him or whatever. Yeah. And I think what's one thing that I realize is, is again, like a really specific example, but some people train by ciphering, right? Which is fine. But in a cipher, you're doing two and a half minute rounds. That's a whole nother issue that pisses me off. <laughs> can we can we speed it the fuck up in, in ciphers, please? Especially when it's a song that you want to dance to. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I've been in ciphers where people have taken up three songs in I've a row. I've seen, yeah, and I'm like, I want to go home. Yeah, yeah. That's not how ciphers. And you know when you start off, you're like, yeah. And then after like about two minutes, you're like. You're like, what is this judge demo? Like, and then afterwards, you're like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, six. yeah. It's like, you know, if there's 10 of us, we're getting two rounds each in yeah. this three hour session. Yeah. And that's meant to be a training session. Yeah. You <laughs> right. haven't even sweat. Yeah. So that, that, right. That pissed me off anyway. But having said that, I've been in play. Like, if there's only five or six of us and we want to go all out and take the whole song, like, cool. If that's the vibe and you're, I think the problem with that, this is kind of a side note. The problem with taking long in ciphers comes when not everybody in the room is down with you taking long that's in a right. cipher. That's We're right. trying to yeah. Yeah. get it popping. It's a conversation. Exactly. Come on, lad. It has to be this. You'll yeah. be you'll be in one of those people that just talks and doesn't yeah. listen, yeah. right? That's right. There you go. So <laughs> that aside, people I think a lot of people tend to train by ciphering. And you're doing generally longer than a minute rounds. Even if you're keeping it moving, you're doing generally longer than a minute rounds, right? So then when you go into a battle and you're only given 45 seconds. You haven't even reached your peak because most people go from like this sort of um, start point yeah. where they're not moving. Yeah. Most people, unless you're like, I think, unless you're like a seasoned battler, yeah. don't have the ability to come in at 10 That's right. and then structure their round. So they start at zero. I'm, I'm, that, I'm that person. Right. And it's normal. You start yeah. slow and you build, right? That's, we see that. You get, to, you're used to getting to, let's say you're 10 at the two and a half minute mark. You get to 45 seconds and you're at three and then you get smoked by someone that trains to battle and you're like, why am I not yeah. uh, getting, why is, why do people, because you don't realize that you're only getting That's to right. three. You just That's think right. you did a round That's and you, right. when it said three, two, one, you That's stopped, right. yeah, yeah. but you don't realize how you're building. And I think, um, I mean, if you're going, like you said about knowing what you want, right? One thing I used to like about the way monsters train is we're like, they used to train four battles, That's two right. battle. And it's like, if that's your thing, yeah. cool. Like train like that. I remember going to, to, see them when they were training and it was like i can't remember when but they were tight they had a stopwatch and it was like not battling but it was like cypher rounds or going back and forth but it was like timing three two one switch go three two one switch go so they got in their head how does it feel to do a one minute round and then you once you know how that feels and how much time you really have which i think most experienced battlers you kind of get a sense of yeah, what a of one course. minute battle yeah, yeah, round yeah. is and how to structure that then you can start to be effective because then you know when you're like, oh, I'm around the middle of my round or yeah. I'm coming near to the end. Let yes. me let me do something with it. Totally. And totally. I think that comes into this thing of like knowing, it's a super specific example to say I agree with yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> but like knowing what the thing is that you're entering and what you're trying to get out of it. 100%. Also, it's like if you're, um, you know, entering, let's say, because Dance Your Style is this weekend. Actually, this is going to come out Sunday, so it's today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like if you're going to dance your style, you can't go doing your most intricate, uh, like uh, foundations. Like yeah, no one come, cares. Yeah, you've got to say something. Yeah, yeah and yeah. you've got to like, you're dancing to mainstream music. Yeah. You're going and doing like, yeah. you've got to be big personality. So it's yes. like, you have to read the rules of that competition, yeah. understand what you're going for. Yeah. If you decide to enter or just say, no, I don't want to enter because yeah. I can imagine someone going to dance your style and be like, yeah, I'm a really good popper getting destroyed by someone with a group. I'm trying to think of who's got like, I mean, Kofi won it last year. Yes, He's got yeah, a great personality, yes, super yes. energetic, like yeah. people like that. Yeah. And you could think like, oh, I shouldn't have lost to Kofi or whatever. It's like, but he is better than you in this arena. Even, this I arena. mean, Kofi's amazing. So yeah. it's not saying that 
he shouldn't be. No, people. of course, because yeah, but, but he's you're gonna lose he's trained to that absolutely. Exactly, and there's a lot of other people who are great at that. It's like Marvel looks great. Marvel and Brooke look great on big stages. Yes, they're great right. at yes. dancing on yes. big stages. Right. So it's yeah. like if you're battling on a big stage. Yes you're not going to beat them with the same shit that would happen. And you see this, like the dancers that we see blow up these small intimate events yes. are different to the dancers that blow right. up the big That's stages. Right. That's right. That was one thing. I, w I went to see um <laughs> Beyonce concert with my sister. Okay. And uh, the twins had a, like their own section, section in it. Like while she went to do a costume change, yeah, yeah. they had like a five or eight minute, like. Wow, that's crazy. They, she just left them on stage yeah. to entertain. And this was like, I want to say Wembley, but it was like, Packed. big yeah yeah and i was like not near the front but pretty close yeah, to the yeah. front and that was the moment when i had a, a different appreciation for them because i'd seen them battle yeah. and you know i'm not a massive fan of the style yeah. um but watching that i was like i've been on big stages i've never been i think the most i've been is like three five thousand something like that yeah. this is like tens of thousands yes. probably yes and you held this stage and you can feel wherever you're sitting you can feel their all can the energy feel it. and yeah. that's a skill man yeah. and it's like Again, I'm going off on tangents to, to make a point, but like, like no matter who your like guy is or whatever, you're not going to beat, you might beat them in terms of style or whatever. You're not going to beat them on a big stage because yeah. they're going to make you feel something yes, different. And yes, there's all these yeah. little things that come into it. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, right, I'm going to end, like I got through to Just to Boo at Bercy. It's like, you've got to know what Just to Boo at Bercy entails. Yes, yes. You've got, if you're in a small club event, yes. you've got to know what that, maybe right. you're like, big trick won't really go off in yeah. the club event yeah, yeah, yeah. but the little intricate shit will or yeah. you're at a jam with like i don't know this type of thing or yeah, yeah. even this type of dj these judges it's like you've got to really analyze the arena that you're putting yourself in yeah, yeah. and kind of decide whether that fits with you yeah. and be like and it sounds like what you did with the scene of kind yeah. of looking around the scene as an Absolutely. arena and being like is there a place i want to fit in yeah, and yeah. even when you said like you considered like stepping out or whatever it's like you were kind of going do I even want to be here? Yeah, Which be, is, yeah. even though it can't be a nice feeling, it's yeah. better yeah. than just headbutting a wall for years. Well, that, you have to, <laughs> I mean, you get to a point where it's, yeah, you you ain't, unless you want to continue to headbutt, you ain't got a choice. So sometimes people look back and I tell them this story and they're like, mechanical, wow. And I'm like, well, I didn't have a choice. Yeah. Like otherwise I would have been just unhappy and resentful. I remember talking to Dixon and Dixon saying to me, I was on the phone to him and I said, like, he's like, Alex, just whatever you do, man, don't burn your bridges because mm. I was in that space. Like right. I was ready to just burn everything. <laughs> Middle fingers up, back yeah, up. Do you know what Eminem style? <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. Hi, mommy. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but like, do you know what I mean? Because it, uh, yeah, I, all the things you've just said there, you're not understanding the arena and, you know, props to the, props to the monsters because they've trained for that. And, you know, how that's impacted my dances, they raised the game in terms of, the battle achieve uh, the battle st standard that it even in my insecurity made me want to upgrade. I'm like, I can't just, you know what I mean? I now understand that actually what they do and what I do is very different. Right, right. But nevertheless, the impact it's had is it's allowed me to upgrade. Um, and I think it's just like you say, but understanding that, that when you've achieved that, that doesn't define that. So sure. Usain Bolt being a hundred meters, um, winner doesn't define what happens in the 200 meters which doesn't define what happens in the 400 meters it's just knowing your space you might be a shit chef absolutely yeah <laughs> like, you know what I'm it's like different arenas it's are different, different arenas things, yeah. and i think it's very yeah it's very interesting that what you speak about because i think um for me it's taken me such a long time i mean you know sometimes i look back at myself and my ego steps in and says alex why did it take you so long to work this out mm. but actually i didn't have a teacher i had to work this out myself we had you guys Right, and there so you we go. could watch it and go. Oh, I don't like this. I do like that. I you know what I mean. So absolutely. it's like, yeah, I get like that's what I was gonna ask you about actually, but I forgot what the specific question was. But about yeah, like I I came into the scene with there already being a scene, and the let's say it's been this is like my fifteenth year, I think, right? And it's like fifteen years, okay. Yeah, yeah. like let's say yeah, two thousand and seven to mm. now, I think it's like fifteen, fourteen, but there was three where the scene wasn't really a battle heavy scene. And even then the first things that I remember being shown was UK champs more for breaking, but like UK champs and um, just to boo DVDs. So I was already introduced to it through the battle scene, but then yeah. there was like two or three years where the battle scene wasn't so heavy and then it started to build. So yeah. I've lived my whole generation with all this with there. the battles, That's but it's right. like, and with 
the context of you guys and Goodfoot and yeah. all these people that were yeah. already in the scene when we yeah. came yeah. doing it. But I guess you, there was nothing to look at as like, how do we navigate this? Well, this is the thing. This is why I say context is everything. And I have to say, I mean, I was one of, part of when me, me and when me and Renegade had our, had our conversations, mm. one of the things that I did feel, you know, one of the things I did bring to, to him when we spoke was that it felt like our story almost was pushed out the frame. And this is mm. what motivated me to do the interviews with the different space. Cause I felt it was important that every genre had their chance to tell their story, to give sure. the situation. So yes, I was, well, I was the second person to become a, a UK champ. Um, I know Rob, when there was no popping category, Rob Poutney, he nominated himself to represent England. Mm. And then Anthony in 2005, then I did, cause we both won it. But like, um, even though we weren't battle machines, for what the scene was, the scene as it was, it became, couldn't have existed had we not done what we'd yeah, done. Yeah, of course. And it's part of the story. And so I guess for me, it was understanding in the evolution, yes, there was an upgrade, particularly from a competition point of view, competitism, a drive for people to want to do better and, you know, yeah. one up manship. But not dis don't dismiss the story because that story couldn't that story made what you what people are working with yeah, yeah, after yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? And so I guess from my perspective, it was almost like saying, Okay, yeah, we weren't battle machines, but we were doing this thing mm. and we were a community and we were the reference point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that can't be denied. Mm. Even if this was built on its own, the context was that you was meant to build this on its own to put back into what was built beforehand. Right. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I mean, even like we, when UMA, came, or we weren't even called UMA, but like me, Lee and Mus and whoever, like when we started coming to, like, we loved the battle stuff, um, but we used to train at Agba and at JoJo's. That was a, yeah, that was a thing. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, yeah, man, there's people that don't even know even about that. And, was, and, the, and the stories, the people that came yeah. up there, all the OGs that turn up there, the iconic battles, yeah. you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it's like, even, that's what I mean. It's like, even if you're not into your side of the scene and you're into the battle stuff, it's like, but where were we doing it at the beginning in the scene that you guys fostered and created? You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. I do agree with that. Yeah. And then, you know, my bat battling for me looked like this. If you, like we met up every Saturday and <laughs> I remember like, if we didn't, if you were off one Saturday and then you come back two weeks later and everyone's upgraded, you're like, but I better work hard. Yeah. Or like little things, like I used to wind up Dixon and them lot. I used to like say like, um, oh yeah, I'm not around this week. And they're like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I've got to go to France. And then Dixon was like, where are you going France for? <laughs> and I said, no, nah, I'm just just hanging. So you, I used to just wind them up. Or I used to say things like, oh, uh, brother, I've been working in this like Thomas the Tank Engine 3.5 animation. What, 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 what what's that? <laughs> but that was how, because we yeah, have yeah, a, yeah, yeah. that's how we like compete. Com competition within friends. Yeah, be. because you were like, you want to see what your mates are doing because you didn't want to be that person that was left behind when everyone's upgrading. Yeah, sure. That's what it was. We just didn't call each other out because there was, well, there was yeah. just five of us. You know? mm. Yeah, I think like, yeah, that was, I guess what we, that's what I liked, I think. And funnily enough, I mentioned this to, I think Frankie, we, we had a brief conversation about it, but with the house scene where I'm like, I, I feel like this was one of the things that I liked. And again, I wasn't so much in like, well, I wasn't at all in like IP or good fit or anything sure. where I didn't know how that was affecting you guys personally, but from a kind of, I feel like we were kind of outsiders. I don't know how the scene saw us when we came in. But well, we, I met I met Mustafa and Lee. I met them first, and then I'd met you eventually. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they were they were kind of outsiders. I met them when I'd go to Watford. Yeah, and that's how, and that was our connection. So, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, but when we came in, we kind of, I think, put it this way: like we love the competition of there being all this stuff, and we were like, oh, cool, yeah, let's we want to smoke people too <laughs> and join in. But also it kind of made us, cause we were just a group of friends, right? There was like a few of us, but it almost made us feel like, I, I guess in this way, I'm kind of trying to give a positive spin on that era, but yeah. like it made us feel e easier to be accepted. Cause yeah. we came to like Arkbar and stuff. And it's like, we, I think the way I felt about Arkbar was it was very like, um, there was a, people who were the Arkbar people, even though I was a there. A core group. Yeah, I was yeah. there for, you know, for, for a while, but I never felt like Akbar was my space. Yeah, it was like, that. I guess, you guys' space yeah, and, that. Yeah. and that type of thing. And, and even 
different styles and stuff. I know the Whackers used to go there a lot. Right, and stuff. Yeah. I never really felt like it was, I, I felt like I was always just visiting. And I felt a bit with Throwdown, which I get, but like Throwdown was like the B-Boys space it, and yeah. we were just visiting. Yeah, so, yeah. But I think because there was all the different crews, it's like if it was only IP there and we came, it was like me, Liam, Mercer, it would be like, well, you're not in IP, so who are you? And like we weren't really close with any of you guys. Like I used to get on with Alan really well. Um, but besides that, I didn't really know any of you guys too tight. So it's kind of like I would have felt more of an outsider, but then- I understand what you're You saying. know what I mean? It's like IP are there, yeah. Goodfoot are there, yeah. uh, Monsters are there. So- we you can, can just be, stay you here. Can be your group. Yeah, yeah, we can just yeah, chill here, yeah, and then yeah. through that we like bonded and you know made friendships in mm. the scene and stuff like that. Mm. But it's like it gave us a thing to be like, oh, we're allowed to be here because everyone's yeah, in their group. That's interesting, and, actually. And I kind of felt yeah. like that about the scene as a whole. Like the more different crews there were and stuff, the more you feel like you could, you're allowed to be. And I I don't know if maybe that's a thing that I think is lacking a bit now. In in a way, it's kind yeah. of weirdly come round where I'm like, there's not so many crews now. In, in different, like, I mean, you know, you still have like monsters. And when KOD was, yeah. came, we kind of yeah. saw people split back, but I kind of liked that split. And when Trocadero was around, I remember having a lot of <laughs> arguments with people because they were like, oh, we should all train at Trocadero and we should all come together as a scene and train together and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I kind of don't want to. I kind of want to, I like having my space. I like that you have your space. And I like that we come together at events yeah. and exchange, oh, what have you been working? Oh, I've been working on this. And it, it yeah, it almost makes you feel less, like there's one group of the scene, yeah, which I feel like kind of there is now, you know, it's like you not as bad. And maybe I'm from a different perspective because I'm older. I don't know yeah, how yeah, the younger kids feel, yeah, but yeah. like that there's like a, a group of people that it's like, we're the scene or like, a, if you know these people, you're part of the scene. And I feel like I'm in that, in that group, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I can imagine someone coming and being like, well, I don't know. I don't know all of these people. Yeah. So Am I allowed to, can I, do I have to be friends with you to get in the scene? Because when we started, yeah. you didn't have to be friends with no one. You just had to have a crew name. Yeah. yeah Who yeah. are you? Like, yeah. oh, we're from blah, blah, blah crew. All right. Well, mm. you're entering the next battle. Mm. Cool. So you're now accepted in the scene because mm. you showed up with a name. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Whereas, I don't know, maybe not now, but like, if that isn't the case, you kind of, you're like, oh, well, if I'm not, if if Dixon and Mechanical and, and Carlos and James don't like me. Am I allowed to still come to Alkbar? Really you know what I mean? That's it's just a different yeah. way of seeing it. I think. That's really interesting. Yeah, I know. I, I, I totally I totally hear what you're saying. And I think, um, speaking of like the younger generation, so one of the things that I've noticed is there doesn't seem to be, there was a time, I mean, it's all the time things when things got a bit difficult in the popping scene mm. and it was very segmented. Yeah. It was starting to impact the young people because yeah. the young people who, they're whoever they looked up to, <clears throat> they were starting to beef each other. Yeah. And it's like, this isn't even your problem. Yeah. So when th that inspired me to do these popping camps, which um, I actually knew Tig Ren and Dominic before that. So I knew yeah, Dominic right. when he was little because he was James' little protege at that right, time. Right, He's yeah, a pop yeah, like yeah, James. Yeah. Then I met um, Tig Ren um, in, in their, at an event in their area. Yeah. But again, I met all these different young people and I brought them all together. And the, the idea of that was really just to kind of combat what I can see was this splintering. Mm -hmm amongst the young people and it didn't need to be there and my narrative was you can represent your crew but you can still vibe with each other sure so i've now started that up again i stopped so, after about uh four or five years and i've just started up we did the first one last week and i and i want to do this again we want to do this every couple of months the idea behind that is though is again to bring young people together to experience each other outside of the events because often what tends to happen is people only get to know each other at an event so this is a chance for you to just get to know each other. Yeah. And in the in in the, in the event, we've done stuff where we were doing a lot of drills and sharing knowledge, but also giving them chance to come together and discuss things. And then they had to then feedback to everyone Sick. to talk about. So they have to get to know each other. And like for example, they'd have to tell something about each other, and then they have to, to feedback to the group what that person told them. So they're yeah. listening. But what I've noticed, <clears> and I don't, tell me what you think. There doesn't seem to be a core group of young poppers the way they was before. And I mm. feel like part of that was because maybe at the time when the when like Firehouse and Monsters were starting to get a name for themselves, the focus was too much on everyone getting a name out there. Mm -hmm. They've almost neglected the legacy. Mm. And now the young people, the young prodigies at the time are now young adults. Mm. They're not really around. They're not really teaching. So now what you have is you've got like a slayer. Yeah. To me, I would argue the only two groups that I can see that are nurturing young people is what, um, what Tyro is doing. In um, yeah. Nottingham, yeah. and what Dime Stop are doing in Scotland. Yeah, I don't know any other group that are nurturing That's a group of young people. Yeah, I think it's hard because 
I think, say, Monsters is a very adult environment. Like training at Renegades is at I late mean, at night. Yeah, it's late at night. Like you're you're training with people who are all grown ups. It's not like a uh, standard class setting, and it's hardcore. Like it's hardcore for adults. <laughs> like I used to train there, and it's like I love it. Again, going yeah. back to the basketball thing, yeah. it reminds me of training yeah, at just, basketball. Ah, da, da, yeah, it's yeah. just drills and working hard. It's yeah. like dying in your own sweat. But I love that. But <laughs> yeah. it's like that's not so much a fun thing for kids to come into, yeah. right? And then I don't know the th with Firehouse because they're, I mean, maybe I guess the potential would be like Sean and Aim would be the, because I feel like. But they're young girls, they're all, they're all their early 20s. Yeah, but with his classes and stuff, you know what I mean? Maybe that's where they might. Uh, like yeah, we spoke about actually. Yeah. Bring, bring yeah. in more younger people in because yeah. I think it's also about the accessibility of how and where you're training. Because I guess maybe. It's about having a class that people can go to. It's like, where do you train kids? You know what I mean? Unless you're going to like rent out a studio and train them. Um, and yeah. also maybe the arenas of it. Because I remember before, I th I mean, I really don't think they get their flowers, but new movements, under 18s new battles. Movements, yeah. Do you remember they used to have that yeah, under 18s battle yeah. all the time? And yeah. we did a few like collaborative events yeah, with them. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like that under 18s battle was like, because what I think happens now is you get under 18s battles or under 16s battles, but it's like as part of a bigger event. It's like there's the adults and here's the kids category. New Movements was not about adults. It's just about the, kids. the whole yeah. event was yeah. for under 18s yeah. or yeah, under, yeah. yeah, under 18s. It was called the New Movements Under 18s event. And I think it's almost like, um, it reminded me of when we were kids and we used to go clubbing, but they used to have under the 16s night. And it's like you go there and you, you don't have to worry about adults or, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. You're just there and you know all the girls are your age and yeah. all the other guys are your age. Yeah. So there's not going to be any like bullies really. It's like, I feel like you need that almost like safe space for them to develop outside of getting their asses kicked by us. Or at least like- Interesting. You, even if they don't, because they have their own category, it's like they win their category, but then they see the real in their quotes, the real adults battle. And then they're like, they kind of, it's like, oh yeah, okay. I'm not in that yet. I hear you. I hear you. And that's a, I mean, that's a different, that's an extra perspective. And that, sorry, yeah. that's not just to say that the battles are the only option, but like yeah. events and jams where it's like, yeah. even if you had like a, just a, like an arc bar, yeah. but just for under 18s, yeah. do you know yeah. what I mean? It's just Absolutely. a social jam that happens every week. I mean, this is actually what I would like to eventually work towards. Mm. I mean, um, that's just in my thoughts. I haven't kind of taken any action towards yeah, yeah, it, yeah. but, but yeah, you're very right about that. Given that safe space, because um, maybe looking back, it was just a time because I mean, at the time you had like Tigran, you had Dominic, you had, um, Max yeah. and he and he had uh, Sam and Ben from Plymouth. Yeah. You had uh, Kieran Lay. You had Will yeah. Smith from Essex. True. You had um, Peter. There was from, a whole generation. There was a massive generation. You know what? That it just came to my head. The only place I I reckon I don't know if you were only talking pop in, but like I yeah. reckon Kieran with the light feet. Yes. Light feet is like an under like eighteen was going on. Yes. event, yes. like uh, an under eighteen style. Yes. Like there's a few people that are like good like there's some of the top level yes. people are adults but yes. i feel like with light feet the overwhelming majority of dancers are so young. i wonder i wonder at what point has kieran become conscious of that i don't know if he's been aware it, of i think that it's was... through um dance schools and udo right. like because that's where it became popular and spread and what's good is that they didn't just try and teach it themselves they got kieran but i think he went around teach i don't know how he orchestrated his teaching but he went around to dance schools and taught it so it's like you might just be like an out of London dance school, like Synergy, I guess. But like they got taught by Kieran over and over and over. And now they're actually good at it. They're actually good you know, at it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. yeah, I don't know if, and I, I mean, I know Kashmir was doing that for a while, like going around and teaching hip hop to people in he was, these yeah. dance schools. And, and I mean, he, he still had his academy. And the thing is, yeah. when, I, when I had the chat with Sean about this, we spoke about this last year. Sean, to my surprise, he, yeah, he was like unable, because he said he recognizes a lot of young people who are engaging in popping, mm. but there's no one necessarily that at this stage he can see, okay, that's a popper. So, you know, we and we'd spoken about that. So the people that, even though I feel, I feel like I've stepped a lot, I've stepped back from the scene a lot. I'm not necessarily always up to date on what's going yeah. on. Actually, he couldn't name any more names more than what I could name. So I was like, that's what motivated yeah. me to say, okay, well, let me just get what we've got together. And then maybe by getting a momentum of who's around, we can start to see who actually is there that we just don't know who's around. You know what might be another contributing factor? Is like, 
And I find that like the only re- like because I've started taking popping more seriously. You yeah. know, I'm I'm old now, but like, yeah, well, no, don't say that because I'm young. So <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like I've started like taking popping more seriously. Like I have a healthy respect for the battle scene and expectations, knowing your arena, all that shit, right? But even with that, it's like that generation mm-hmm. of battleheads, mm-hmm. Brooke, Breaks, uh, Dixon, oop, all of those guys were fucking good, and they got really good they were already good they got really good and then they like took over the world like they were like not took over the world scene but they were like they've made them brooke is like a big contender in the world scene so i can imagine as a kid being like why the fuck do i bother entering a popping battle right because i kind of feel like that you're gonna get yeah yeah yeah, you know what i mean it's like why would i and i think you know while the battle thing is the most attractive option it's like if i if i go to a battle and i'm like fucking like even with like Harry, Harry was another yeah, young one yeah, that yeah, got yeah, good. Yeah, but even yeah, like, man. if all if all of the top UK poppers are there, like what is the fucking yes, point? Like yeah. I'm barely get like, even if we do a top thirty two, yeah. I, I might get in then. But yeah. like top yeah. sixteen, if yeah. everybody's there, no yeah. way. Who am I beating to get in? So it's like I think it's also something of, and I think we were speaking about this recently with um. Do you remember Abe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, we, we spoke a couple of weeks ago at one of them events. Somewhere. Oh, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like he was saying that he feels like there's like a starting to be a gap where it's like those guys aren't battling as much anymore. Yes, you don't see Brook and that's Breaks right. and those guys and entering everything. Yeah. Um, so now maybe there's a point where the popping scene is going to open up a bit, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I feel like hip hop has always been like that where we've had a few good people, but the overwhelming majority have been, it's like the finals are always going to be one of like four people in hip hop, but like the semi-finals or the quarterfinals could be a mix of things, yeah, you know? Yeah, I yeah. feel like the other styles don't have a lot of people anyway, like. Um, yeah. No, that's a good, that's popping, when it got Popping and breaking. Yeah. When it got to like, we're, we're so strong in a world scene, yeah. it might put you off being a young kid. Unless, like you said, you, you go out of your way to say, I'm going to teach you and you feel like or you have the safe space where you're not going to get your head kicked in by Brooke. Like, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Not Brooke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then the thing is, then again, again, it goes back to, I guess, what we were saying about how do you structure and how maybe, I mean, maybe it's too organized what I'm saying, but maybe there needs to be some sort of way that um, in order to keep the machine running yeah. of, of developing the next slot, you push the people that can teach and then you bring in, so for example... Um, I remember one of the things I said to Renegade many years ago, I said to him that, you know, I I always say to young people who speak to me, if you want to understand the art of battling, you need to speak to him. Yeah. And I did challenge him. I said, I wonder how many people you would recommend to come and speak to me about mm. understanding the body and thingy. Because that's my thing. That's yeah, what yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I was saying to him in that point was leaders and people who've got the specialty needs to be supporting each other to say, this is where you go to get this bit. This is where you need to go to get this. So someone like, for example, Jitsu, ideas, concepts, and he's got that. Let's celebrate it. There's 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 reference points of knowledge that Mm. we go, but it seems like there seems to be in the same way that in the scene, success is only viewed in a certain way. I would also argue that learning Mm. seems to be only explored in a very specific way. And we need to widen it up because we could be stifling our own opportunities. I'm not a battler and I cannot teach you to battle, but I can get you moving. Just yeah. like the same in a machine, a factory that makes the aeroplane shell is not the same people that creates the engine. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. work collaboratively, collabor- yeah. collaboratively. And so maybe one of the things that we need to be doing from leadership point of view is how can we look at what we've got and say, well, okay, this is your thing. This is your thing. Okay, right, let's build this together. Because I see in Poland, I see the amount of kids in Poland right now. I don't know if you follow any of the poppers out there. Classes look busy, and when mm. I see them doing solos, they like okay. I see in Canada, yeah, who's next for us after Harry Popper and after Leah when they start to get to their mid 20s? Who's the next lot? Yeah, I wonder. Oh, this is maybe going on to something that I was talking about in the capsule. Check that out, too. Let's <laughs> uh, see how I'm slipping these plugs in. You need to just put this, this, this when you when you edit, just make sure you just put the comes line up, in. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. But it's like, I was saying about people in the scene doing things that aren't dance in order to help the dance scene. Because I feel like what it's you're saying, me. the immediate thing that comes to my head is, right, we should put on a once a something, like once every two months or whatever, an event where it's like, right, this is a popping thing. And it's like, 
you teach jitsu te teachers, renegade teachers, Harry teachers, Marvel. Like you get all the people who are specialists and good at their stuff yeah. in one workshop, one after another. Yeah. And it's like a day long popping yeah. intensive. Yeah. And you do that every month or whatever. But yeah. in order to do that, you need an event organizer. You need to apply for funding. Yeah. You need to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you have to take these things seriously. And I yeah. think this is kind of the thing where, and I mean, I'm doing it with this and with the capture and stuff, but it's like, we need more people to take initiatives outside of dance in order to help dance. Cause yeah. We're not going to solve all our problems by just dancing it out. You know what I mean? That's like fine. we might with each other, we That's could fine. have battles and stuff, but it's like, okay, we're, we're not, let's like what you're saying. It's like, you're not, uh, there's not a, like another um, uh, wave of young poppers yeah. coming, but you didn't think, well, I better enter some more battle it's like yeah. you're like okay what can i organize to give them a to space like a space and that's yeah. what new movements did with yeah. the under 18s and that's what you know all of these things even arc bar and stuff arc bar wasn't just we weren't meeting on a street corner someone organized it someone, someone it, yeah. gave us that space someone organized madam jojo someone yeah. organized storm and these things were like where this there, i mean maybe you guys dancing outside of pineapple was, yeah. was that, not, that was a thing but then storm was there on a wednesday right i, I just didn't go because i had to have to work in sure. school at the time but yeah but it's like these things were organized by someone who took an initiative which wasn't I want to dance and that's what gave years of growth yeah. to come you know yeah. someone yeah. organizes just to boot yeah. someone organizes these things so it's like I'm not saying everyone needs to become a fucking event organizer but yeah. whether it's organizing events whether it's like you know there's you know not many people know about um applying for funding yeah. and, and stuff I mean, like it's, that that's and it's hardcore. like yeah you, you can run a different type of event and yeah. you can run a different type of workshop when you have like real money behind you and there's money out there the arts council exists and it's like these things these problems that are identified like helping kids get into popping is a is a valid, it's a valid thing. thing and it is yeah. very helpful it has yeah. outreach it has like engagement there's a yeah. lot of stuff that yeah. there's a lot of organizations that would want to support that yeah. but we're kind of here looking inwards at the yeah. scene going oh there's problems but yeah. it's like sometimes the answers are by turning around and looking to the outside world Absolutely. you know and and realizing that there's people around that in the spaces that can actually help or give support so like yeah. a lot of people don't know like when before like the scene was what it was and i was doing a lot of my work in the school the secondary school that i worked at i mean when i think about how they trusted me they pop and pete came to the second a mainstream secondary school for two days oh, mad. and spent time with the kids hanging out yeah. the teachers loved him Jeffrey Daniels came down, Shabadoo, Lollipop. Mad. In fact, whenever like Skeeter Rabbit, when all the EBs used to come, they used to, at the end of events, make time just to let the kids go backstage and hang out with them. Sick. We had, um, I mean, obviously all the breaking convention trips at the school allowed yeah. me to take the kids to. Um, at one point we was working on taking the kids to LA, mm. but then I'd left and then I'd moved right. on to another, um, another school. So there's all of these initiatives and all of these different stuff that, could happen to help build nurture and and again when we use nature nurture sometimes people think of this kind of flowers and daisies yeah. that it's <laughs> nurture is getting people to think about what do you want out of this yeah. what do you enjoy out of this okay how can we accentuate that yeah, yeah, how yeah. do you respect people little little silly things like i'd say how do you like i remember when i first got that group together that i was telling you about in the facebook group I got everybody to to post one clip and everybody had to go and just give one piece of positive feedback yeah. to everybody. Yeah. How do we start to think about how do we engage and how do we hold each other accountable mm. in these spaces? There's all of these aspects that we could be offering the community, but if people don't take the time to talk about it, if, if I have to win a competition before people start to listen, for example, mm. we could be missing out on an opportunity. Yeah, I hear that. You know, so... Man, I think I feel like what we've just been saying over the last two hours is really just a bit, it goes back to just it's just conversation and just explore. Yeah, man. I think that's like part of it as well is like, yeah, just the open conversation and just figuring shit out as a as a community. Because yeah. it's like even like you talking to like me and Sean uh, and we all kind of feel similarly about, yeah, well, where's the younger generation of poppers come? It's like, oh, cool. Like if we don't speak about this, like we could run something together absolutely. you know and there's probably more people absolutely. that we could get you know that but you know people that i don't know and vice versa absolutely right. and it's yeah. like this is something that i've goes on behind the scenes so I, like i'm happy to say it on the microphone but it's like so many things happen in the dance scene and things move and things get created and wheels turn because of conversations that happen and this is kind of part of why i start the podcast but it's like we could have this conversation like after a jam in Finland one time, like we just both happened to be there. We all get food. Like I had so, when I was traveling more for battles and stuff, I had so many crazy deep conversations with some of the like best dancers in the world who you would never expect to be like, yeah, I don't really like this style or isn't that bullshit that that happened? And I'm like, 
I wish people knew because then you're putting on this smile for Instagram or, and everyone's like, oh, I want to do what they do or whatever the case is. But, or yeah, they might talk about something that you're like, shit, I didn't even know you cared about that. Yeah, like yeah. I, I would assume people know that you care about like the younger generation, yeah, but yeah. they might not because yeah. they might have just seen your or clips. Or just know what I've done about them kind of thing. Or, yeah. If I would say if they do know about what you do, it's because you speak about it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it's because you yeah, do your Insta yeah. so you and you do an example. Yeah, yeah and it's yeah, like yeah. yeah, we need. Like, there's so many things that happen, and what my point was as well is like, like these things happen by having conversations. Like I've gotten a lot of work or people, even with the podcast and stuff like that, and hookups here and there because I have conversations with people and then go, they call me and like, hey, you know, you said the other day that you want something for your pod. Like I know someone that does that, and it's like. Cool, I've got a hookup there, but it only happens through conversation. Yeah. So now imagine if we talk on these platforms, there's way more people listening absolutely. and way more things can happen for the scene. So I'm a big advocate for that. Yeah, no, well. absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's great to know that. And I mean, Luke, you said something about, you've said it a couple of times around the whole thing of stepping outside of the space to kind of reach out and and, and skills and stuff. And yeah. I, that resonates with me because I think one of the things that's helped me to navigate through my own journey and working at myself is, like, I, you know, my background is education. So I've had that circle of people. Um, and into the public speaking space, I've met a load of different people. I, I hit a place where I just started to turn up to different, I remember just turn up to cryptocurrency <laughs> things. I have no interest in it. Yeah. I just need just to, to like gain talk different skills something. And, yeah, talk, yeah, yeah. and I, I believe sometimes as, as street dancers, if we just see myself, I'm not a dancer, but I love dancing. Mm. And if I label myself, if I just limit myself to just, this is where I belong in this community it means that maybe I miss out on opportunities to acquire skills that I can then bring back to a scene that I love. Yeah, and how or, can you, you know what I mean? Like, if you're labeling yourself as just a dancer or whatever, then you're kind of automatically saying, if my scene isn't good enough, why aren't, why isn't someone else helping? It's like, well, what are you doing about it? You know what I mean? And it's like, if we all pitched in, <laughs> the scene might be a better place and as opposed to like, what just we have. dancing. Like, it's like, you know, going to an event and be like, oh, dance events are all shit and the prize money's low and blah, blah. It's like, well, if you put on an event, maybe that would change because you're, and this is what I think I'm doing. <laughs> I think I'm doing with this, where it's like, I'm identifying things that I don't like about the scene and trying to fix them and do something about it and be like, oh, cool. Well, there's everybody's like, um, there's no fucking good footage of stuff. I'm going to become, that's how I started. I was like, it's hard to, for everyone to get footage. I'm going to go and learn how to use a camera and then obviously now I have to charge, but you know what I mean? But it's like, I, I very, I don't think I've ever charged, maybe once I've charged full price that mm. I would charge for a company with mm. a dancer. Mm. Cause I'm like, of course I'm going to give you discounts and help you out. And sometimes I can't give you a discount cause I literally need to pay my rent. But it's like, you got to go and get some shit. And if you care about the scene, bring it back bring and it back, yeah. not just yeah. sit in the scene and be like, it's like um, sitting around a fire on a like on an island or something. You're like, well, oh, the fire's going out. And it's like, <laughs> The fire's going out. I'm getting cold. The fire's going out. Go and get some logs and put them on yeah. the fire. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. we'll all be warm, yeah, you know? Absolutely. And yes, like we all need to equally go and get our shit. But it's like just sitting there saying the fire's going out yeah. doesn't do anything. Absolutely. And, you know, and again, create that space because I think my philosophy with working with the young people, in fact, this might sound selfish, but I wasn't even necessarily doing it for the scene. Mm. I was just creating the space that I would have liked to have been in. So uh, bro, that, the I think scene that's all can happen is, there. Man. But then this is what I'm building. Yeah. You know what I mean? And in that space, this is what will happen. And I think in a way, that was kind of the that was kind of the monsters thing. Was like there's no space where we can battle. Let's or there's no like competition or blah blah. blah let's create that. Yeah. I just think, like you said, there wasn't maybe enough space created for like it was kind of bulldozed through Absolutely, the middle because, instead I mean, of going we weren't around. Gonna, I guess from the IP perspective, because that wasn't our narrative, we weren't going to just readily just go, yeah, come, and, come in and just yeah. call everybody out. So yeah. I guess the only way they could have had to have done it is through this way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, it, yeah. yeah, it was like they bulldozed through the thing instead of making two parallel roads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which yeah. I think now things have gone into more yes, parallel yes, road and yes. people can exist in different lanes. Yeah. But um yeah, I think that's, you know, that's super important is to like, yeah. create. Yeah, it's great what you said, like create the space that you would have wanted what when you were younger. To be, I feel absolutely. like the same thing, or even you would want now. Like I, we kind of touched on this before the pod started, but like, I feel like for me as a 31 year, almost 32 year mm. old who wants to still be engaged in the scene, I don't want to be on fucking TikTok. Like no offense if you're on TikTok, but 
I don't I don't want to be on it. Yeah. What I want yeah. is to listen to podcasts, is to have intellectual discussions and listen to intellectual discussions. Like part of what I want to do with the capsule is produce other people's talks. I we spoke You've spoken about this. about this, yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's like I don't just want to talk. I also want to help other people put their talks on platforms. And like I want to listen to like um like breakdowns of battles. I want to listen to this. Like I wanna I want more stuff that maybe someone older would care about. I get why a 16 year old doesn't want to listen to this podcast. Yeah, for sure. Totally fine. If you are fair enough and, yeah. and welcome, but <laughs> like I get if you're 16, you don't want to sit down and listen to us chat for two hours about yeah, how things yeah. are. But and actually, 30, you'd, be, you'd be surprised. There's yeah. some young people that actually sure. yeah. are interested, but do you know, I really think it comes from is a case of when you make that young person feel included, then you don't have to ask them to, sure. to, to do that. So it's something about how we relate to the young people where we're just like, oh, you don't know, or you come to the space, we're going to school you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so like, what do you want from nature? That's nurture. why I think um, new movements were so good because even with new movements, it's like they had um, Josh. Ju ju uh, uh, cost, cost, um, no, not because um, he was DJing, Josh. He was one of the new movements guys, okay, right? Okay, okay. But he was young as well. Right. So you have a battle where it's for young kids. By? By young kids. And the DJ is young. So he's playing stuff that they, they want to hear. Yeah, you yeah, haven't yeah. got like some yeah. older DJ, like Debo DJing yeah. for like 16 yeah. year olds because yeah. Debo doesn't listen to 16 year old music. Like, yeah. so I think you kind of need that where you have, even like having a young host is like, if you have space like that. Yeah then it's like, it's what they want, what they not want. what we want them to do. And it's tough because part of us wanted to see it look a certain way. I mean, I yeah, can relate sure. to that. I don't want to see, like, you know what I mean? You want, but it's that fine line. How do you do this? Yeah, and yeah. It's like kind of keeping it in the culture while still letting the, yeah. because the thing is, and this is going on to another topic and I won't go yeah. too deep into it because we've got to go. Yeah. But it's like, kids are going to do what they want to do, right? Anyway, yeah. We can either accept it or push them out. If we push them out, they're not only going to do what they want to do, they're not going to do what we want them to do. Mm -hmm. If we bring them in, they're going to do what they want to do yeah. and some and of what be, we want yeah, to do. Still reference what <laughs> you know? it is you want to, yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely. like, yeah, if you look at like, yeah, Harry or uh, Max Silk or yeah. these guys, they were like the young kids and because they were taken in and and, and accepted and molded, it's like That's, they've got their own shit. Yeah. And they're they're really good. Else. They do the cool, like Harry was of course like, uh, into like all the animation and the yeah, cool yeah, wave and, yeah. and that shit. And, but he's become a good fucking yeah, popper with yeah, it. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's taking it his own, in his own direction. I mean, yeah. when, I, when I'm with Max, bless big up Max, uh, you know, he's helping me to build my confidence back on the floor again. Cause I said, Max, yeah. I want that. I want that young boy energy again, man. Yeah. So, so when we work together and again, it's that exchange as an adult, like, there's so much benefits to it to investing in young people because actually you're only going to get benefits back. Sure. That's all you're going to get. Like it doesn't yeah. have to be, it's not, you don't do this to f fulfill your own ego. You have to be okay with your own journey mm. because then when you see, like you said, the look, likes of like Max and Tom doing stuff and I'm thinking, I can't do that. <laughs> you got to be okay yeah, with that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You got to be good. So otherwise like that, that then doing that is not for you. Either, yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah, if you're trying to maintain your position. Yeah, it's or, not going to work. It's yeah. not going to happen. Because the kids will, like, if you're teaching them, they're going to take everything you know and do better. And that's the job of every next generation, you know, just to yeah. take everything the previous generation did, but make it better. So. And, and, and be good about it. Yeah. Because yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. not, it's like you said, you're going to be at home going, you know, yeah. uh, I see Max <laughs> yeah. ain't going to take me, Tom yeah. ain't doing it. You know what I mean? It's, it can't be that at all. Yeah. Man, um, I'd love to continue, but we should probably wrap up. We've taken uh, it, boy. Yeah. Well, who's gonna be? Long, if you're still, if you're still tuning, you're awake. I've had some long ones. Yeah. I've had some shorter ones. I don't know. It's just it is what it is, man. It is the conversation it is. is what yeah, it is, and yeah. well, they can always go away and come back and go away and come back. Exactly. And do it that if way. we think about it more like documenting conversations, yeah, then it is what it is. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm yeah, not. Yeah. If people listen, they listen. Um, if you have got this far, thank you for listening to the end. Uh, leave a comment or something. If you've listened to let us know if you got to the end. Most definitely. Um, check out the capsule at the capsule.ldn, which is the platform slash network that this will all live on. This is the Duke London podcast, which is one offshoot of the capsule. Um, I also run the capsule, but this is my podcast. I'm hoping to expand into, into more things. I won't give too much away now. Um, but yeah, so go check out at the capsule.ldn. Um, this podcast will be on Spotify, all the audio platforms, YouTube. Um, I also do 
the capsule podcast which is every tuesday unless something comes up um where i talk about the scene and things that have happened during the week and my opinions on them um so check that out what else check mechanical out because he'd be dope and um yeah if you don't know him already you do by now and if you're here for him thank you for checking my stuff out um I think that's everything. Thank you so much for being here. I super appreciate it. Big up. Um, and, you know, well well conducted interview. Oh, tackled a you, lot man. of things, man. So, yeah, oh, thank cheers. you. Cheers. Yeah, it's really nice to have these conversations, man. And, like, yeah. yeah, one thing I was saying before, I think we spoke about this, is, like, different people. Like, I could listen to you and Renegade talk, but it's not the same conversation me and you were going to have, even yeah, if it's about the same subjects. Yeah, like, it's all different perspectives. So it's just absolutely. nice to actually have conversations with you myself. Um, known you for a long time always been a super nice guy and, man. And, <laughs> seen, and I've seen you know you've developed from coming from toy box as you yeah. said, man, and just how you've you know you've you've made yourself in a very proactive way you've established your space very much everything you've said in the interview you have actually done it oh, in that way and that's so nice yeah. to hear man thank you because yeah. I'm trying but it's like you know you always doubt yourself so it's nice that it can be seen from the outside yeah so trying my best <laughs> 110%. thank you man and um, thanks to the University of East London dance urban practice degree for hosting us um shout out to joe because she's dope and i think that's all the formalities out of the way so catch you next week we are out peace guys boom big it <laughs>